blown away by the Raiders in Super Bowl 18 and last week by Miami in their season opener. Still at the age of 35, Beisman is one of the best with a talented core of receivers, including Art Monk, the big wide receiver with the speed. Or there's always the smallish gifted one, Charlie Brown. The Redskins fixing the pass with the runs of Big John Riggins meet the San Francisco 49ers tonight in a rematch of last year's NFC title game. It was in that game that the 49ers' Joe Montana almost pulled off the classic upset. Down 21 to nothing in the fourth quarter, Montana responded with three touchdown passes. Montana did not have his main man of the past few years, Dwight Clark, in that game. One of the game's most prolific receivers over the past five years. Clark is back tonight to compliment the running of Wendell Tyler and the receiving talent of Big Russ Francis, who, along with the other 49ers, recalls last year's meeting as a game they should have won. I think most of the players on this 49er team will tell you that uh, after eight long, hard months of thinking about what happened in last year's NFC Championship game, they're coming into this night's game fired up. And it's going to be a long night for Washington. So he moves around in the pocket, as does this man, Joe Theismann, last year's most valuable player in the National Football League, a different Joe Theismann this year. He's not as verbal as he has been in the past. And believe me, in the past, you could say hello and you'd get five minutes out of Joe Theismann. You say hello today and you're lucky to get an answer. We are set to go now. To your right, the Redskins. Mike Nelms drops at the end zone. He'll await the kick of Ray Worshing. The 49ers won their opener with four seconds remaining. They beat Detroit 30-27. Washington lost to Miami, dramatically to Miami. They lost 35-17, to but the way they lost was kind of frightening for Redskins fans and players alike. Dan Marino with five touchdown passes for Don Tulip Dolphins in that win. Mike Nelms takes it to the five-yard line, and we're underway. Nelms hurdles over the 15-yard line, out close to the 20-yard line, and tippers are going to fly here in the early going. There is so much emotion that you could feel coming up from the field as these two teams worked out, and Theismann comes on to the field. His big man, of course, will be John Riggins, the control man that he would like to control the football with tonight, and he'll have an opportunity because there are multiple injuries on this 49er football team defensively. Two great wide receivers, Charlie Brown and Art Monk. They have been hurt somewhat at tight end. We'll get into that a little later on, but they have a, a veteran offensive line, a good offensive line, as you know, if you follow this team over the past few years, and if you follow pro football, you have to follow them because they have been in the last two Super Bowls. Riggins left. Riggins ah. to Ronnie Lott, and Ronnie Lott was a question mark coming into the game. One of those injured 49ers we spoke of, but there is the front three of the 49er defense. Jeff Stover would have been a left end. He could be gone for the season. Linebackers, Buns and Ellison and Turner, they're all nursing pulled hamstrings. And at the cornerback, Mario Clark over on the left side. Eric Wright would have been there. He's gone for several weeks with a knee. Ronnie Lott, who missed much of last week's game against Detroit over in the right cornerback, has a very sore ankle. Ronnie Lott, by the way, also customarily would play the left side for the 49ers. They use him on the right side tonight to try and protect him from the run game. His second down and 10. Thighs them back. Gets the blitz. Fires over the middle. Incomplete intended for Don Warren. And that will bring up a third down and 10. Ricky Ellison defensively there for the San Francisco 49ers. Well, I expected them to try Ronnie Lott relatively early in this game because because of that ankle, it's going to be pretty tough tough for him to come out of a backpedal and try to cover those deep outs. Uh, one of the other reasons he's playing on the right side is because Mario Clark is going to play on the left side. They got him for the 49ers, and he has never played any position but the left side. All right, nine-year veteran. They just picked him up from Buffalo in the offseason. Only missed three starts in those nine years. Thighs them back with three wide receivers, third and ten. Scrambling, looking for first down yardage. He will not get it. And the crowd rises to their feet as Feisman is stopped short of the first near the 28-yard line. Carlton Williamson, the strong safety up there defensively along with Tom Holmo. Williamson also playing with a sore knee out of Detroit last week. And them all covered. McLemore dropped for the 49ers. And he was a big factor in the 49ers' win over Detroit last Sunday, a 55-yard return set up a Wendell Tyler touchdown. You're looking at Jeff Hayes. He does the punting for the Washington Redskins. McLemore is situated back about his own 25-yard line. 
He's a good hang time punter. Hangs up there a long time, but off the side of his foot, and that's a very poor punt. The 49ers' first possession will be out well over their own 40-yard line. Joe Montana trots out last week in that 30-27 win over Detroit, 16 of 25, a touchdown, and 188 yards. But the man can do so many things. If you rush him, he'll slip, slide out of the pocket, looking for receivers that always work back to him. Freddie Solomon and Dwight Clark, of course, back after our a knee injury in our final game last year, the Dallas game. He had surgery and his back. Perhaps a little tentative. We'll watch him tonight. On first and ten. Play action. Montana dumps it to Roger Craig, the second-year fullback. And Craig has first down yardage inside Washington territory near the 45-yard line. Mel Kaufman chasing him out of bounds there. Let's take a look at the defensive unit. A veteran one, of course. Big Dave Butts anchoring that left side. The Redskins have lost their defensive left end, Todd Liebenstein. There's a bacterial infection. He is not available. And taking his spot is Charlie Mann. The linebackers, of course, Olkowitz, Kaufman, Malott. And the cornerbacks, Tony Washington and Daryl Green, really got themselves burned last week against Miami. First down and 10, Tyler in motion, and Montana's back once again. Fires it once again to Craig. Good move by Craig. Back to the inside, inside the 40-yard line. Pick up of seven. It'll be second down and three as Mark Murphy made the stop. Roger Craig was really a surprise to this team last year. They drafted him high, but he caught 48 passes last year, and he ran the ball real effectively for this team. He had over 700 yards, and uh, they're real happy with the way he's played ball. They were a little disappointed with Earl Cooper. They moved him to tight end, and Roger Craig has filled in for him real nicely. And a good receiver, as we have already seen. He had 48 receptions, did Roger Craig, a year ago to go with those 700-plus yards. We have a second down and three. Wendell Tyler. They're around there. Look out. Tyler turns on the speed, taken out of bounds but not until he's inside the 20 near the 18-yard line. Daryl Green, the cornerback, coming up there to make the save. A 19-yard pickup. Wendell Tyler has really turned the run game around for the 49ers since he came a year ago. Well, as you can see, uh, they got to thank Russ Francis for that because he got an excellent block on the defensive end. He turned him in. He kept all the pursuit away, and all Wendell had to do was get outside and try to outrun Daryl Green, which is virtually impossible. Daryl Green is one of the fastest men in the NFL. I caught another one. I caught another one, too. You can't believe what old Freddie Solomon did. Those, those wide receivers don't do that. He did a heck of a job. He closed off Mel Kaufman in there, too. Tyler in motion once again. First down and 10. The ball at the 18-yard line of the Redskins, and Russ Francis will have another first down. The big man going down. Very tough, but he has the first down around the six-yard line. Malott and Kaufman there defensively, and the 49ers on the prowl on their very first possession. And the reason you can sense it so easily is that nobody's getting close to Montana. They haven't been close to him on any of the past plays. A couple of them were play action. You expect a little more time, but look right there. Plenty of time to throw. Bad omen for the Redskins. For the first time in 20 games, a week ago against Miami, they did not have a single sack awesome. or a single interception. First down, goal to go. Montana, three for three already. This is Wendell Tyler, or Roger Craig, rather. Good That's running. Right. Yeah. Good move. Inside the five, down close to the two. It'll be second down, goal to go. Second year, man, out of Nebraska. Well, thus far, it seems as if the Washington Redskins are reacting relatively slow. Uh, the 49ers are, seem to be a tad quicker than them, and they seem to be a little more aggressive at this point. Three tied in offense now for the 49ers. Russ Francis is in there. Earl Cooper has just come in, number 89. John Frank, the rookie from Ohio State, number 86. The run offense. Tyler is the tailback and gets the call. And he is hammered and hit hard by Malak first and then Murphy. Short of the touchdown, it'll be third down, goal to go inside the one-yard line. Was Wait, that a semi-Tony Dorsett spin that time? Yeah, a semi-Tony Dorsett spin, but it's it's a good move by uh, Wendell. As you'll see, he comes in, he's hit right away by the linebacker, but he's got a lot of extra effort in the pass. That has gotten him into a lot of trouble. This is normally the time when he fumbles. Uh, but this time this year in the last two years they've been working on him holding the ball covering that ball up he did that time and got him down to the one foot he line still is tops in the NFL over the past three years for coughing it up one of the reasons the Rams let him go a year ago that of course and Eric Dickerson third down goal to go Tyler he gets in second effort and the 49ers on their very first possession 
from near their own 40-yard line behind the mixing of the plays by Montana. The run, the pass, they send Tyler into the end zone. They're on the scoreboard first. Well, Frank, we talk about extra effort, and that run was certainly an indication of windows fired up. You know, as I said, he fumbles a lot, and normally it's from extra effort. Sherman Lewis, the running back coach, coach sliced the film together on for window for him to look at. That every time he fumbled, it was from extra effort, but uh, they've worked on it, and he appears to be uh, ready to go tonight. Ray Wershing with Montana handling the placement. And the 49ers lead 7 to nothing. 49ers with 10-45 in the first quarter on top of the Washington Redskins, 7 to nothing. It was 94 degrees in San Francisco on Saturday. Warm again yesterday, but as you look down at Candlestick Park, a sellout crowd on hand, you can see the fog starting to drift in. The temperature at kickoff was 68 degrees, a great night for football as we look at Mike Nelms. 49ers on top, 7 to nothing. Their very first possession, and Wershing is set to kick off. short by Wershing. Nelms awaits it at the 12. Nelms pops an opening. And Nelms goes down. Progress out to the 34-yard line. And so many times over the past few years, he has made the key return. Let's take a look at that scoring drive. See it in animation. The run and the pass. Runs are in red. The pass is in black. And that's how Joe Montana Mixed up his offense moving down the field. The play is, of course, sent in by Bill Walsh, the offensive brain of the 49ers. First down and 10, the Redskins. They like to control this game, keep Riggins in it. They got out of control against Miami last week, and he was averaging over six yards a carry. But they had to play catch-up, and they had to take Riggins out. First and 10, five. Hits uh, Monk, and Monk comes down at midfield with the football and a first down inside 49 territory. First down. You think they know his ankle's sore? Well, you saw him go down. That was Ronnie Lott, number 42, trying to cover Monk. Monk, he slipped. He went down. As I mentioned earlier, when you have a bad ankle like that, you can imagine if you tried to run backwards as fast as you can, stop and go forward as fast as you can, these guys are going to run a lot of turn-ins and turn-outs on Ronnie Lott here tonight. You saw Lott slip, trying to protect that right ankle that was twisted severely against Detroit. They tried to get number 22, Dwight Hicks, in there to help him from the inside, but it's first down Washington at the 49-yard line of the 49ers. Charlie Brown in motion. Riggins over to the left side. A reverse to Muck. 49ers uh -huh. reading it beautifully, and Muck gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. It'll be second down and 10. Well, Lawrence Pillars did one excellent job, number 65, on that play. He was being double-teamed. He saw the uh, reverse immediately, and he fought outside, and he slowed up the uh, run of Monk. I've got to question that call because that is not bread and butter for Washington. That's right. There not. is a weak defensive front line for the 49ers. Gone is Pete Kugler at the nose tackle. Tui Asasopo acquired from Seattle is in there. Stover, we already mentioned, out of the lineup. He has been replaced by Lawrence Pillars. He should be able to run straight ahead against the 49ers. Nobody does it better than the Redskins as we watch Don Warren struggling. He'll lose yardage a couple of yards. It's going to be third down and long, third down and about 11. When I think about Monk running that reverse, he's only had, he's carried the ball on reverses, I think, nine times. He's only, he's had minus three yards. But one of the things I think uh, Joe Gibbs was thinking about on that play is going into the championship game last year, Bill Walsh thought his defense was much quicker than Washington and can beat him with pursuit and quickness. And I think they were trying to take advantage of the 49ers over pursuing by running the reverse that soon in the game. Four down front for the pass rush for the 49ers on third down along 11. Monk goes left, Charlie Brown up at the top of your screen. Bison has the time, steps into the pocket, hangs one up intended for Alvin Garrett deep and complete. And now Washington will have to punt away. Quick note, if you have not heard, Chuck Muncie of the San Diego Chargers, who missed the plane to Seattle over this past weekend, has been traded to the Miami Dolphins for a second-round draft pick. And Miami, with a 2.7 rushing average over the past two games, can sorely use him, that is, if he can find the plane. <laughs> well, if he works out his problems, whatever they might be, that's going to be a valuable acquisition for the Dolphins. I think that makes them the team to beat. They might already be without him. 
That's punt for Jeff Hayes, 28 yards. This one end over end. McLemore from the 22-yard line of the dead run. A good way to get a bump on the head or get a big run back. And McLemore has run so many back. It'll be first down and 10, the 49ers. Their second possession from near their 26-yard line. The NFC Western Division champion San Francisco 49ers. They went on to defeat Detroit, and of course they lost. The NFC title game, a shot at the Super Bowl, and the closing moments against Washington 24-21 a year ago. Their second possession, first and 10. The ball just out over their 25-yard line. Montana is back. Good uh -huh. shot to Francis. He was wide open. And Francis over the 45-yard line of the 46. And Russ Francis this year playing so much better than he did a year ago. And, of course, he set out the previous year, retired from New England, and finally was traded to these 49ers two years ago. It starts again in the middle, though, Jake. Nobody's getting any penetration back here. Look at it. And he throws, and there's the flipper. Francis is the flipper. He's got it right in there. They call him that because he spends a lot of time in the water. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. At the 46-yard line, first down and 10, the 49ers. 7.30, and the clock is moving, remaining in the first quarter. 49ers on top, 7 to nothing. Craig, right side. Craig, this time, held to a couple. And it'll be second down and 7. I want to remind you, next Saturday, live at 3.30 Eastern, right here on ABC, Oklahoma goes against Pittsburgh from Pitt Stadium. Head coach Barry Switzer leads his Oklahoma Sooners east to battle the Panthers in a clash of two of the country's top teams on CFA College football right here on ABC next Saturday live at 3.30 Eastern. The Sooners with a couple of fine running backs. Spencer Tillman and Earl Johnson, a couple of thousand yards between those two last year. Single setback is Craig. Second down and seven. Montana back. Uh, Francis again. Uh, first down at the 40-yard line uh -huh. for the 49ers. They play and catch. again, Don, you hit her right on the head. There is no pressure on Montana. None. They did not have any on Marino a week ago, but Marino was taking a quick drop and getting rid of it very quickly. Montana has all the time he would ever ask for back there. As you can see, he has all the time, and Francis just run a little, what we used to call a button hook in there, and you got to say, Russ is fired up for this game. He had two drops last week, two balls he should have caught uh, before the game. You saw his comments about the Redskins. I think he's really fired up here tonight. <laughs> Ronaldo Nehemiah with the great speed, the former great hurdler. So many world records, number 83. He's at the top of your screen. Now he's in motion. And off the left side is Craig, and he battles again for a couple of yards. Malat there first for the Redskins, and then getting help from Kubin. Joe Montana on the sidelines, and Joe Theismann. Or rather, Joe Theismann. You have to really wonder what that 38 to 9 loss did to not only Theismann, a lot of the Redskins. They were thoroughly trounced in the Super Bowl. Second down now, long seven. Tyler, number 26, single setback. Craig is flanked to the right. Montana looking for Dwight Clark. He's covered and he spins off yeah. and finds Russ Francis. Yes. Montana at his very best right there, trying to get deep with Dwight Clark. Clark was picked up and covered, and he switched off Don to Russ Francis. There's Dwight trying to run a little uh, out and up. He was open on the out, but he had to turn it up, and he yeah. wasn't open at that point. That's exactly <laughs> right. But uh, again, Joe had plenty of time to check that one out, come back and pick up Russ coming across the secondary receiver. And Russ Francis makes it first down 49ers. They already lead 7 to nothing. That's amazing stat right that. there, because we're going back to the Super Bowl. <laughs> In the last 10 quarters, 101 to 29. And yeah, we're going to talk about this 49ers offensive line, Ayers, Quinlan, Cross, and Farnhurst. They've been together for six years now. They were here. They got together when I was here back in 79, and uh, they're an excellent offensive line. They, they're going to give them plenty of time. First down and 10. The ball at the 29-yard line. Play action by Montana. That is Wide unreal. open once again. That is Freddie Solomon, who had a 76-yard touchdown in the NFC title game eight months ago, and he has just given the 49ers a first down and goal to go near the seven-yard line. That is, that is tough. Freddie's just doing a basic kind of a down and across route. You can't really cover them back there. They're trying to play a little bit some man and, and uh, zone, but if you've got the time to throw, you can do it. Well, you know what they said after the Super Bowl? They found out in the second half that the Redskins couldn't cover them. That reference right there is the two flags that were dropped late in the NFC Championship game that incensed the 49er players and their fans. Montana, first down, goal to go. Nobody spins out of that pocket as well as he does, and he finds Solomon. There is nobody. The flag is down in the end zone. No pressure at all. 
Well, it, I think Russ Francis is going to be involved in it. He may have, they may have said he picked off a guy in the end zone. And that will come back. The indication by our referee, Dick Jorgensen. The preliminary indication against the 49ers, and they're bringing it back. He may have picked somebody off. But... Interference, number 81. Yep. Yeah. Offense. That's Super where you get the combination so many times between the tight end and the wide receiver. The old basketball pick play. Well, Frank, they were deep in the end zone. You got to give Russ credit. He almost got away with it. He, he, he wasn't open and he saw Freddie coming across with a guy trailing him and he just stepped in the guy's way. It remains first down goal to go. However, the football is now back at the 17 yard line or rather the 17. Montana, his first pressure of the night. He'll do this to you also. And then wisely steps out of bounds before the big hit at the five yard line where it'll be second down goal to go. Mark Murphy and Daryl Green both taking Montana out. And West Francis already four receptions, a major factor in the 49ers two drives. Yep, Howard would be proud of Russ. He was, uh, he was always uh, Howard's favorite tight end in the league. He's all world there for a while. I remember that. Well, you know, like the whole universe came along. Kellen <laughs> yeah. Winslow. Yeah. Second down, goal to go. White Clark is stuck to Montana's right. That's Solomon, number 88, in motion. That, that, that is unreal. Wide yeah. open is Tyler. That is unbelievable. Flag is down again. Air call so Tyler drives into the end zone. We could have had Lyman downfield. I think it might have been holding, too. I don't know. No, they called it on Redskins. Yeah, 71 for the Redskins. Roughing pass. Right. And the touchdown will stand. The penalty will come on the kickoff. First one foul. Charlie Mann. Defense, sir, number 71. Defense. Six points. 15 yards on the kickoff. Just a quick analysis. The Redskins are going to have to get something in the form of a pass rush. That time, Montana, even though he rolled to the right, had a good four or five or six seconds to look for alternate receivers. I would guess that Wendell Tyler would be about his fourth That's receiver on that bat. <laughs> <laughs> the back that came out late out of the back. Wershing to put the 49ers up 14 points. And another flag is down. We already have a penalty that will be assessed against Washington. And this time, we'll have to kick it over again. Holding indicated against the 49ers. That is kind of a rare call. No, I see holding all the time. I just never see them call it. They hold down there yeah. all the time. Well, if you're going to have a holding call, you should have it on the PAT. <laughs> Here's Dick Jorgensen once again. Holding number 67. Offense, one more try. John McCauley, they'll back it up. The reason you don't see much of it on the conversion because it happened so quickly, there is no need for it. Take a look at it from the reverse angle. You'll see number 67. That's McCauley. Oh, he's out by himself. That's how we can get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about decapitation? That's hugging. That's all. He's just hugging it. That is slowing down coming around. Pushing. Now from the 20 yard line. Same result. And the 49ers with 3.49 remaining in the first quarter lead 14 and nothing. And now look how much time he had. He's already had about five, six seconds at this point. That was the frustration that you saw right there. Charlie Mann, the 71, that was the penalty because he hit Montana after he threw the ball. Would not want to encourage it, but it's what the Redskins are going to have to do. They're going to have to toughen up, but they are in deep trouble for the second week in a row. Looking at our booth from across the field. That's how we line up. Out of the middle. He They're loves the middle. <laughs> Used to play for these 49ers back in 78 and 79. Was here when Bill Walsh came from Stanford University. The penalty, of course, assessed on the kickoff. So Wershing will hit it from the 50. And Whoa. Nelms will have little or no possibility to make the return. That may be a record for Ray Wershing. Uh -huh. I've never seen him kick one out of the end zone before. Let's take a look at the scoring drive, and once again, on their second possession, the 49ers took it in. It's so methodical, too, when you think of it. The, the runs are in red, and the passes are in black. They start off throwing. Ran for that first, throw again, ran for the first, throw, throw. There they go. Penalty, penalty, and 14 to nothing. 3.45 remaining in the first. 
The Redskins in regular season last year, 14 and two. The two games they lost, Dallas and Green Bay, we called both of them. They lost by one point before being blown away in Super Bowl 18. But they are struggling here tonight. They are not a comeback team, and they are down 14 to nothing. Riggins, left side. They like to use Riggins to control the ball game, and against Miami. They got themselves out of the type of football game they want to play, and that is to keep the football. And they were doing a good job against Miami. Riggins was averaging six and a half yards to carry. The 49ers came into this game. They say it was imperative that they got in front early to get Washington out of that running game because they have so many guys beat up on their defense. They didn't want to have to play against a physical running game. They want Washington to throw the football. Alvin Garrett in along with Hartma, Charlie Brown on second down and nine, the three wide receivers. Riggins, left side, and he just bowled right over Tina Turner and gets out over the 25-yard line, close to the 26, but it will be a third down and four, and we should see Joe Washington come in. Riggins will go out. Washington, of course, the nifty receiver coming out of the backfield. Just kind of squirts out of there. Well, one thing Washington might think about, if they run and hold the ball a little bit longer, San Francisco won't get it. <laughs> There is the shift. Muck up into the slot. Joe Washington, the single setback, number 25. Oh, Muck. The blitz is on. Oh. And it was in the hands and out of the hands of Muck. It would have been a first down, but now Washington will have to punt away. And they are confronting a red hot offensive unit of the 49ers. Joe threw that one before Muck turned around. It was he was wide open quick. Could have hit him over his left shoulder, but the route called for him to go down and stop, turn out to the outside, and the ball was there a little too fast for him. Well, Ada McLemore is back, standing short near his own 33-yard line. Jeff Hayes now with one kick of 28 yards, the other one not much better. Swirling winds here at Candlestick Park. However, they have calmed down considerably from kickoff. This time, Jeff Hayes connects. Takes McLemore back inside the 30 where he indicates the fair catch at the 29-yard line. 46-yard effort this time by Jeff Hayes as he puts the foot to it. And we'll be back at Candlestick Park right after this message. On 14 to nothing, first and 10 the 49ers at the 29-yard line. The Redskins ordinarily tough on the road during the regular season. They have won four in a row, and they have won 13 of the last 14 regular season games on the road. But they're in trouble here. Montana senses the pressure. And fires it out of bounds, incomplete. And it will be second down and 10. So I'm trying to bring a little extra help to get a little more pressure on Montana. They, that time came with a delayed blitz by Mel Coughlin, linebacker. Don, it's almost a cliche when they talk about Joe Montana being able to elude the fast rush, but he does it about as good as anyone I've ever seen. That right there is a very telling story, which you alluded to earlier, too, last week. No interceptions and no no sacks. And really not a great little pressure on Moreno, and we haven't seen that tonight. So that might be the real key. Second down and 10. Tyler and Craig, the setback. Sprague 33, Tyler 26. Montana again, a lot of time, and this time Craig was turning up field before he had his hands on the football. It'll be third down and 10. An opportunity now for the Redskins. They'll hustle in their prevent defense. And Joe Montana, well aware through films during the course of the week as to what that will be. Joe Montana is normally pretty good against uh, on third and long. I think last year they had third and 15 or more about 30 times, and he converted it about 14 times. That is amazing stat, by yeah. the way. That's all 40-something percent of the time on third and long. That's really big. Third, third down and 10, the 49ers from their own 29. Montana this time, pressure. But he gets it off and it's complete. Uh -huh, uh -huh. First down out of the 47-yard line. Again, Montana pulling it down and then popping up with the ball and seeing Solomon for the first down. As we look at uh, look at the defensive secondary here. Straight zone. They bring in Monty Coleman, a linebacker who drops into that. He turned Green around. Daryl Green, number 28, trying to cover Freddie Solomon. And once again, he falls down, but Solomon was open anyway. Natural turf here at Candlestick Park, and of course the diamond configuration. The Giants are still playing baseball here. 
at the 47-yard line. Craig, right side, Beautiful. gets the block out front, and Craig close to the 45-yard line before he goes down. Good block by Russ Francis out in front. Andre Craig, and they really found a pair of running backs last year. They got Craig in the second round. They traded for Wendell Tyler. When the Rams got Harry Dickerson, they were ready to let Tyler go. He had had the fumble problem. And they put Craig and Tyler together. Tyler, 856 yards last year. And Craig, as already mentioned, 725. So they went from almost nothing, rushing in 82, to a good running attack. Did the 49ers. This is Tyler. Nobody does oh. it better when he's on. He is a glider, great cutback, good movement. Wendell Tyler to the 32-yard line, first down, 49ers. Tony Peters had to make the stop. Look at Tyler. He did a good job once he broke into the secondary. When it came time to get hit, he put that ball away. Now, let's watch him. It's sort of a, well, actually, it's a draw play. With good a job, guard. job by Quillen against Okowitz. Well, he did. That's the offensive center, number 56. Now, you see him put that ball away. Now, that's something he hasn't done in the past. That will be the final play of the first quarter. And do they love it here at a sold-out candlestick park? You better believe it. The Redskins are in deep trouble. We'll be back in just a moment. Final quarter of the NFC Championship game, a game in which they lost 24-21 to the Redskins, but they were down 21 points in that fourth quarter. They exploded offensively, and they're picking up where they left off. Craig on the receiving end of Montana's pass. <laughs> oh, what a move. Okowitz. This is the tackle in the open field, and Craig now inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Uh -huh. Oh, that's fun to flip one out there right about the line of scrimmage and let this cat take it for about 30 on you. We take a look at it in super slow-mo. We go back to that Super Bowl last year. I mean, the championship game last year when both Montana and Bill Wall said that they found out they were quick. They can outquick them and that they couldn't cover them. But no pursuit the there. None, none, none at all. Okowitz was out there all by himself. And the next nearest man to him was Dexter Manley. And Okowitz has got to have help on a running back. First down and 10. Montana. Oh. Oh. Dwight Clark just off his fingertips. E. White. Now that's a pass Dwight in the past would have never dropped. You know, he had a knee injury last year, and I don't think he's come totally back. He may be strong, but it takes about a year and a half before you come back from a knee injury. And as you can see, that's a pass that Dwight Clark would have caught last year this time. He had the speedster, Daryl Green, beat to the inside. Montana had it in perfect position. As O.J. mentioned, Dwight Clark in our Dallas game. As a matter of fact, our final game last year of the season hurt his knee, required ligament surgery, and I agree totally. It does take a while to come back, particularly if you play the skill spot. Wide receiver, running back. But he doesn't catch it with his knee. You have to get there. Oh, got to feel good about being there. Second and ten. The blitz is on. The Redskins trying to get some rush. Oh. And the flag goes down. Carl Monroe was the intended receiver. Mel Kaufman was there defensively for the Redskins. I tell you, it's almost impossible for Mel Kaufman to cover a little man like Carl Monroe. He's only 166 pounds. He's a tough kid, though. He ran... As you can see, it is a penalty. He's a tough little guy. He's only 5'8", 166 pounds, as we look at Joe Gibbs on the sidelines, and he can't be happy with this. Twice in a row now, the Redskins have been covering backs out of the backfield with linebackers. Illegal contact, number 55, defense, first down. And it is Mel Coffin. A tough job, though, to ask him to cover a speedster like Monroe out of the backfield. Might as well go ahead and give credit to the quarterbacks again because, of course, that's his job. You see, he picks out the ones that are, you oh, know, like, miss, miss, remember miss, the big, your best big man on there. <laughs> little me, that one. Oh. He's only 10 to 13 for 131 yards, Montana, thus far. Piece of cake thus far for Joe Montana. Tyler, inside the five on the first down call. <laughs> Taken by Mark Murphy. It'll be second down, goal to go. Hey, if this gets to be 21, yeah, there's going to be some head shaking on that Washington bench. It is awfully hard for them to think about coming back from 24 points down because they have relied, as everybody basically knows, on Riggins for so much. Second down, goal to go. Tyler and Craig, the setbacks. 
Tyler. This time, the Redskins front four holds Tyler to about a yard. It'll be third down and goal to go. Take a look at the first quarter numbers. It was totally dominated by the 49ers. Their first two possessions they went in. One first down. And <laughs> the passing yardage, 114 to 15. The total yards, 178 to 30. Time of possession, almost double. My gosh. I knew it was bad. I didn't know it was that bad. And it might get worse. Play action, Montana. It just did. No. Oh, Tony Green. Time, good defense by Daryl Green against Earl Cooper. Daryl Green, a first-round draft pick out of Texas A&I. He's very short, 5'8", but he has a vertical leap that's incredible. And we'll see the field goal unit. Well, he has to have an incredible vertical leap. That's right. He's going to cover uh, Dwight Clark or Mike White, two guys who are 6'4". Here's Cooper. That's the former running back O.J. spoke of a moment ago. Now Rice. Good move by Daryl Green. He almost came up with the interception. Worshing, one of the fine kickers in football. Did a career-high 53-yarder against Detroit last week, and he drills it through the uprights. 19-yard field goal by Wershing. And the 49ers continue to roll. They beat 17 to nothing. We're in the second quarter. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia soaring around. Our cameraman Charlie Mitchell operating a West Cam. That's an experimental camera that is worked by remote control and hangs down from the blimp. And as you can see, good shot of Candlestick Park on a great night for football. And not necessarily a great night for the Redskins as Mike Nelms was back at the goal line awaiting the kick of Ray Wershing. High kick. Nelms from the two. And Nelms, very tentative into that wedge, and he gets only to the 17 yard line. Here's a camera we spoke of a moment ago. All kinds of new innovations. That's the little round one. Well, that's the wheel, but right in front of the wheel is the camera. And you know a lot of things, Shake. Well, all I have to do is listen. Now you read a lot. They have marked it inside the 19-yard line. Riggins, single setback. It might be important to do something this time, Skins. Heisman, Riggins. It's a block, breaks back inside of it. And down he goes out near the line of scrimmage. Keena Turner, one of the quickest linebackers you're going to find, was out there defensively. You know, I'm looking at Theismann, and he, he doesn't have that spirit. You know, one of the reasons he's, I guess, a little less than enthralled by all the players around the league, they aren't big fans of Joe's, because when he's got you down, he's clapping, he's screaming, he's doing things like that. Well, now that he's down, he should be doing that, trying to psych this team up and get it moving. Is that Theismann or Riggett you're talking about? That's Theismann I'm right. speaking of. Yeah. Second down and 10. Walker in motion. Riggett tries the middle. Nothing happening there. You. This, this Redskins team is flat. I don't see anyone out there trying to get them going right now. I mean, Butts is a little upset too. On the defense, but right now, this is the time that someone should take leadership. This is when Theismann should should be trying to get these guys going. Should be clapping his hands and doing those things. Whereas we have an injured 49er yeah. on the field, as we say, they can't afford it because uh, they have enough injuries already. If they do, they uh, mentioned they lost Jeff Stover, the defensive left end, uh, last week, perhaps for the season. This is Lawrence Pillars, his replacement. Keep in mind that Fred Dean is a holdout. He's their designated pass rusher. He's not here. Tonight, a pair of ex-Notre Dame quarterbacks go head-to-head. -head. And as we look at a shaken Lawrence Pillars, we'll remind you at halftime, Jim will be talking highlights with you. Also interviewing three of our Olympic finest, Mark Breland, Bernal Whitaker, Evander Holyfield, all great champions from the Olympics, and they'll be having something too important to talk about at halftime. Third down and nine for the Redskins. They're down 17 to nothing and struggling. Dysman on the rollout. Dysman loses the handle, and when oh. it goes bad, it really goes bad. Something's wrong, you're right. Oh, bless his heart. He gets the recovery, but... We will see the punting unit. He was really shaken up, too. He was really hit. Oh, he's wobbly. 
Yeah, he looks like he wants to run to the 49er sideline. They've turned him around now, but go to a neutral corner, Joe. One of the bad things that happened here on a rollout, you have a lot of time, and nevertheless, Feisman could not find a receiver. They were well covered. This time he just bounces it off his knee. He covers up on it, and he took a shot. Well, he saw where the first down marker was, and he saw about three 49ers coming after him. There is McLemore. Now, he's up at his own 35-yard line. Hayes to putt, and the 49ers should get the ball back in good field position. Not a good kick again by Hayes. And it won't take that artificial surface bounce for you. The 49ers will get it back at their own 38-yard line. 36-yard punt by Hayes. We have 11-14 remaining in the half, and the 49ers are coming onto the field with the offense. Joe Theismann rolling out, took a tremendous shot. He was dazed. He started to go to the 49er bench. They had to spin him around, and now they are working on him. If he cannot come back into the game, they're working on the left side. We'll see this then. Jim Hart. 18 years with the St. Louis Cardinals. The veteran's veteran. Known for over 34,000 yards. One of the highest put-togethers of all time in the league. And he looked good in preseason. We saw him against New Orleans. Threw the ball crisply. Their main problem is they got to stop the 49ers offense. First down and 10, 49ers. Their own 38-yard line. Play action again. Montana once more. And this time... Checking out of the pocket, Freddie Solomon had run a deep pattern, but very wisely when he saw Montana in trouble, he came back to give Montana the angle. They called the old knockout punch right there. Yeah. They're going to try to hit him big with those deep ones, and he went back, and they had the deep ones covered. Yeah, That's he, right, Joe. So he says, okay. Yeah, they were looking for Dwight Clark on that, but Murphy came over to help Anthony Washington. They got to find that alternative, and Bill Walsh is a passing offense. There's always an alternative. Paul Monroe comes in, Wendell Tyler out. Monroe, number 32, second-year man out of Utah. Little man, 5'8", 166 pounds, but he's tough. Montana rolling again. This time he gets hit as he hangs one up. Oh, and, most. And this time Mark Murphy could not quite get to it, but Montana was really banged Money. to the infield part of the diamond here, and that is hard. Had Money Coleman and Mel Coughlin, both linebackers, come in, and they've they got to do something over there, because they haven't been able to stop it with just the four guys up front, so they're going to throw everything, as they say, with the old proverbial kitchen sink. Joe got hit, obviously, in the head. You may have got a cut up there, and there's yeah. very, little thing, very little you can do to protect it. He has to put that helmet back on. One thing that Joe uh, Montana did on that, he saw the blitz right away. That's what a good quarterback will do. And he, I don't think the play was designed for him to roll to his left, but he saw the blitz right away, and he tried to run away from the pressure. Montana now has missed on his last four passes, and the pressure is starting to be applied to the Redskins. Third down and 10. They come with the blitz again. All linebackers, and Montana gets hit again oh, yeah. and has to throw it away. And this is what yeah, the Redskins a... really needed to pull together. Pressure on this man, because he'll pick you apart if you don't. That's big Tony McGee who came in there from the inside. They're doing their little mixing it up. He started at defensive left end. Tony McGee came down the line, moved in behind Butts, and got a straight shot at Montana. They stopped him. Oh. Tom Orris will provide the 49ers' first punt of the night. Mike Nelms is dropped back, along with Alvin Garrett. Double safety now for the Washington Redskins. Horace off the side of his foot in front of Nelms, and Nelms fields it at the 22. Gets to the 25, and he is hammered. But the Redskins defense coming to the surface a little bit on that offensive attempt by the 49ers. And they get the football back at their own 26-yard line. 10-42 remaining in the first half. San Francisco 7 of Eisman will stay in the game. We saw them working on what appeared to be a cut on the left side of his head under his helmet. How you get that, I don't know, other than some of the webbing, perhaps, was a little rough. Either that, it was one of the great hits of all time. <laughs> First down and 10. The Redskins would like to get something happening. They're at their own 26-yard line. Look out. Feisman goes down. This is Milton McCall, the linebacker on the blitz. That had to be like a defense reaction. The linebacker's sitting there. I know some defenses, they give them the freeway or the leeway. 
if nobody's there to block you go after that quarterback and Mark was coming back in from his wide uh, position on a motion didn't get back in time to block it's quite a family those McCalls his father was an all-american receiver years ago at Stanford his brother was an all-american defensive end Duncan and now here is Milt McCall a academic all-american studying medicine at Stanford gets the sack on Theismann second down and long yardage Louis Kelcher is in a nose tackle for the 49ers out of the backfield Washington uh, good and, uh, hustle. Washington is hammered by Jeff Fuller well, you got to give this 49er defense credit. They have all kind of adversity they have had to overcome for this game. They lost Eric Wright. Here's the guy who led the team in interceptions. Of course, Fred Dean, this guy who led the team in sacks in here. And most of the guys on the field have some kind of injury. But, you know, a great team will psych themselves up. You know, they get a situation like this. They were in the championship game last year. I think they're just psyched up. And uh, they're playing a perfect game, near perfect game right now. Third down and 12. The Redskins. Monk in motion. The blitz is on, and Theismann gets single coverage. Oh, and trying to get to Alvin Garrett. Good defensive play. The free safety, Dwight Hicks had drifted over there. In the blitz situation, he was man for man. He made a fine play of the ball, quite frankly, that was underthrown. So, Washington will have to punt. Good pickup on the blitz on this occasion. He just tried to strong arm it. You see Garrett's got it there, and there's a slight little slowdown, so it was about a step, step under thrown. Almost tipped it, but Garrett couldn't hold his feet either. Jeff Hayes is being worked tonight, the punter for the Redskins. He's out there again. McLemore is at the 49 35-yard line. Hayes doesn't turn it over. Shortens the distance, and this is McLemore. Barry, but not until he gets to the 45-yard line. The 49ers once again in good field position on a 36-yard effort by Jeff Hayes. 9.51 remaining in the first half. The Redskins need to get something happening. From San Francisco. A couple of goals and a bronze there. Holyfield probably should have had his goal. They have an announcement coming your way at halftime. Of course, we'll have highlights with Jim Lampley from New York at halftime. The third-ranked offense in the NFL, the Washington Redskins from last year, has one first down thus far tonight. And they're down 17 to nothing, the 49ers, first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. The Redskins showing blitz, and they bring it. Oh, and Tyler, and a flag is down as Tyler sprints to a first down inside the 45-yard line. But the flag is down at the line of scrimmage. And this time, the 49ers will move back. I tell you, the, um, Bob Euchre again. Huh? Bob's everywhere. He had a tell bad you. night. Look at those eyeballs. Yeah, he stayed up too late, Bob. San Francisco will do that to you. Illegal use of the hands. Number 88. Offense. Still first off. Well, they had Fred, Freddie Solomon go into motion, coming back into the line of scrimmage. He went, and he had to crack back block. He had to block relatively high on a guy, and a guy Fred's size. They don't like... Locking those linebackers up high. So the first down inside the 45-yard line is turned into a first down and 20 back at the 49ers 35-yard line. 49ers are doing a great job of getting outside on the run, though. Solomon in motion once again. Wendell Tyler drives the right side. And Wendell Tyler goes down. Sliding out there is Larry Cuban, who's in there at middle linebacker now. As they continue to work on Joe Theismann on the sidelines. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Back at Candlestick Park in a game that's been totally dominated by the San Francisco 49ers thus far. Frank Gipper along with O.J. Simpson and Don Meredith. 49ers on top, 17 to nothing. They scored a touchdown each time they had possession, their first two possessions. And Wershing has added three with a 19-yard field goal. The Redskins have generated only one first down. Second down and 17. Uh, Earl Cooper. Cooper pulls ahead for the first down inside the 45-yard line. That was really a beautifully executed play. That was a very, very delayed sort of one-man or no-man screen. It looked like 
Joe did a good job of setting that thing up. Yeah, he may have, or he may have just been ran out of the pocket. One thing Joe does, he finds that second and third receiver probably as well as anybody who's ever played this game. And as I said earlier, Bill Walsh's offensive uh, game plan and his passing game, rather, is a passing game that says there's always someone open. All you have to do is find them. First down and 10. They have marked it close to the 43-yard oh, line. Oh, boy, look at that. Very graphic, graphic. I like graphic, graphics best. Montana gets with the quick arm out to Russ Francis, his fifth reception of the night, but he was held to a about a three-yard pickup as Tony Peters was up there very quickly from the strong safety. Peters gave him a little shot to the face there. <laughs> They're just trying to keep him out of the blitz. That's why it hurt 49ers offense, the only thing it has. So you get an idea, too, Don, of the presence of Joe Montana. They were flooding backs to the right. Redskins blitzed with their right side. No one to pick them up. He knew that he had to get rid of it very quickly, and he did. He's now 12 of 19, 156 yards, one touchdown. Second and seven, Tyler at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and seven. Charlie Mann in there. The defensive end, number 71, made the stop. Again, I'll remind you, Redskins fans, that Todd Lieberstein okay. is not here, a bacterial infection. He's lost a tremendous amount of weight, so we are watching Charlie Mann perform, and they don't mind having him in there. Well, Frank, I tell you, they were picking on Charlie Mann a little earlier, and uh, what the Washington Redskins have done is shifted their defense, trying to force him to run to the left instead of Charlie Mann's side on the right. Charlie's not in there right now. Third down and seven. Montana, wide open. Mike Wilson, who scored a pair of touchdowns in the fourth quarter of the 49ers comeback last year in the NFC Championship game will give the 49ers another first down. Darrell Green's out there all by himself. You see the blitz coming, but he didn't get there in time. Joe throws a very good ball right here. This was thrown right before he made his break, right where you want it. Right, Mike? Hey, Darrell Green, with all his quickness, could have been close, closer on that one. Well, we saw him in one of his first games get picked on like Ernie Terrell got picked on by Muhammad Ali last year, but he came on and had a great season of the playoffs. First down and 10. The Redskins slide into an odd configuration. Defensive line. Cool. And Montana tried to squeeze it into Earl Cooper. Good coverage by the Redskins. It's our super slow-mo camera that you saw during the coverage of the Olympics, we used it so much in the gymnastics and again in diving, rowing. It's a marvelous piece of apparatus and it looks just like any other ordinary camera. But the technology is vastly different. Second down and 10. Ball at the 26 yard line of the Redskins. 6.43 remaining in the half. 49ers driving once again. Dwight Clark up at the top of your screen. Mike Wilson is split to the left. This is Roger Craig. Nice. Good tackle by Malak. There you go. That'll bring up third down along. There's a loss of a couple. Judge the man some of the baseball action going on around in the eighth inning. Baltimore over Detroit, three to one. New York and Toronto. They're in the ninth inning. And Milwaukee and Boston in the seventh inning with Milwaukee on top six four in the American League, and that's where the action is in baseball. If Minnesota can win this one tonight and they lead two to nothing in the fifth, they'll be tied for first place. National League final, Chicago rolling along closer and closer. More National League action, and we'll keep you up to date on all of those games as they develop. Third down and 12. Tyler is in motion. Montana out of the pocket. He can take this one the long way. He posted the line of scrimmage as he tries to get out of the grasp of Tony McGee. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's a good old one. That's twice in a row they've stopped him without scoring. They scored the first three times they had the ball. Well, it's debatable if they stopped him from scoring uh, this time uh -huh, when you right. see Ray Wershing coming on the field. <laughs> and last week, O.J., Ray Wershing had an individual high, a career high, if you will. He's been around a little while. He hit one from 53 yards, but that was off the artificial surface. He will it. have a win swirling behind him helping him here. I love his nickname, Mo. It's a machine, like Wershing Moshin. 46-yard attempt. Montana is the holder. 
You betcha. That's why they love him. Yeah. Mo. La Mo. Mo gets Mo. And the 49ers are now on top, 20 to nothing, 546. We may, we've never been able to show you this without it going out of focus, but with the super slow-mo, we can. This is what the hands of the holder does. He tilts it just a little bit for Wershing, and notice he does not take that finger away. And keeps that lace pointed, hopefully, toward the old goalpost. Was that a Don Meredith autograph football? It, it, I thought I saw your signature there. It could have been. Neither mine or feet nor Zell's. San Francisco has scored four out of the five times they've had the football. And he is enjoying the action. <laughs> Worshing to kick off. Nelms is deep for Washington. Worshing hangs it high to the five-yard line. Oh, wow. And Nelms struggling out over the 20 near the 24-yard line. And the Redskins will trot their offensive unit back onto the field, and it has to be a bewildered offensive unit. They've been able to get nothing going. You know, when you look at kickoff, that's when you can tell the emotion of the two teams. And you normally tell which team has more players on the ground. And I just watched that kickoff, and the 49ers were tagging Redskins, and they were about <laughs> three to one Redskins on the ground to, to 49ers. You could sense it when we came out here and watched the workout. The 49ers jumping up and down, a lot of enthusiasm. And a little revenge for the NFC title game of eight months ago. Stays in on first and ten, rolls left. Fires a shot and it's complete. Their second first down of the night. Art Monk out to the 39 yard line for the first down, a 15 yard pickup. First down. Saturday, live at 3 30 Eastern Time, Oklahoma and Pittsburgh from Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Sooners have a couple of really good running backs, Spencer Tillman and Earl Johnson. Between them, they had over 2,000 yards last year. Pittsburgh has a fine quarterback in John Kanjami. And they have a great lineman in Bill Fraley. It's a little different, but he certainly is a great one. Looking forward to perhaps an Outland Trophy year. On first and ten, Feisman throwing short. Gets to Rick Walker for a gain of about six to the 45-yard line. Ah, I see. He didn't catch it. Oh, they said he trapped that ball. Well, the play before, they did a little, uh, little roll out to the weak side, and they threw at Ronnie Locke. Now, I thought they would be throwing more passes to Ronnie's side. As I said, he has that bad ankle, and I would think that they would try to throw the ball in front of Ronnie a lot. San Francisco over Washington, 20 to nothing, 520 remaining in the half. Second down and 10. Alvin Garrett, three wide receivers for the Redskins. Garrett in with Brown and Art Monk. 49ers, full blitz, and Feisman uh, collects the brunt of it. Down he goes. This time, sloppy pickup on the part of the Redskins. Nobody was there, and he didn't have a quick receiver to hit in case there was one, that particular pass route. That's what Milton that, McCall, watch number 53, Don. Well, there again, see, he chucks that wide receiver. Actually, it's Don Warren. Nobody's back there. He's going to go for that quarterback. That's good heads up play by McCall. Oh, you know, did you play with his dad or against his dad, Bill McCall? We played in the college all-star game together. He's a doctor now. And that young man, Milt McCall, is studying to become a doctor. Stanford University. Third down and a whole bunch for Joe Feisman. This time he keeps a few folks in the block. Uh, not in a third and 14, Joe. To the 43-yard line, where it'll be fourth down. Well, he had no chance. He was rolling out trying to hit Art Monk on a comeback, and Art was double-teamed, and he had no choice but to try to run the ball. And the, this 49er crowd is on their feet. loving this. <laughs> they were convinced they should have won the NFC title game, and this is the bell. They ring on every good defensive play, and it's been ding dong in the night. <laughs> Sounds like a cable car in the yeah, stadium. I got to ride them today, too. That's fun. I'm oh. glad they're back working again. I love the cable car. There's McLemore at the 15-yard line of the 49ers, and Jeff Hayes back once again for the Redskins. He'll be exhausted before the night's over. Six putts for Jeff Hayes. The 49ers have putted once. This time, Hayes gets a partial turnover. McLemore with the fair catch at the 20-yard line. 
We have 435 remaining in the first half. We'll be back after this from the National Football League. Team. That'll be something, won't it? If they make it, and they should, the Cubs last pennant, 1945. And yeah, the Cubs are getting some revenge, too, aren't they? They've been down there for mm -hmm. a long time. Chicago busy place this weekend. Our congratulations to Walter Payton, who became the all-time overall yardage leader with a 179-yard rushing day yesterday. Sweetness. He is marvelous. On first and 10, the 49ers. Tyler following Craig. It's a yard, yard and a half, and that's about it. Well, if the 49ers have a weakness, they can't run those little, what we call, uh, exotic plays inside. They're not like the Miami or Pittsburgh. They can run those switch blocks inside real well. Most of the 49ers uh, linemen are more prone to pass block, and they don't have that quickness inside. Look at that group graphic there. Total yards. Amazing. 53 for Washington. We're going to run out of red. Tyler now, 45 yards on nine carries. Ronaldo, Nehemiah, into the lineup on second down and eight. He's split to the left. There's an opening. Well, they had enough quickness there. They caught him in a blitz. Tyler gets the first down. They did catch him in a blitz, and I think they had a trap on. It's the easy way to get 10 quick yards. I think you're going to see Larry Kubin 50. No, He's it was straight go zone blocking. Uh, straight zone blocking, and... Uh, well, it was zone, it. but they did have a blitz. That's the, the middle linebacker. That's why he wasn't there. Yeah, he ran himself out of the play. But as I was saying, they don't have the quickness up front, the 49ers. They run traps and counters, but... They're a good power team off tackle, and of course, they pass block, and this is a passing team. First down and 10, the 49ers. They perfected the passing game, now they're working on the run game. Play action by Montana. Hanging one for Nehemiah, and no chance at all. Good defensive coverage. Tony Peters reading it all the way. Stride for stride and ahead of Nehemiah as well he should be, because Nehemiah has that 9-3 speed. That was one of the few poor choices on Montana's part because it was a deep zone that they were playing. There was no way near my, well, near my speed. I guess the yeah, hope springs eternal because a guy like him may be able to go get it, but I don't think Joe should have put it that deep on that play. Yeah, it's just a first down play, though, Jane. He didn't have any place to go with it. I think they no. did have him covered, so just throw it away. Yeah, loosen him up. Yeah, get out there. The swirling winds. Flags at the goalpost to our right are blowing away from the field. At the left, they are also blowing away from the field. Something must be going on in the middle. Tyler, oh, nice move. On second and ten. Good quick feed for Tyler. Out over the 35 for a gain of about six yards. They bring up third and four. I tell you, see, I'd love to see a back do that. He he really went into the hole left of the center, drew the middle yeah, linebacker to that side, then he hopped to the other side of the center, and he got some positive yards. Of course, the only way you can be successful doing that is if your center gives you a nice push on the nose, man, and Evidently, uh, Quinlan was able to do that. That, or plus you have a real quick hop when you yeah. go to that house. Well, you had a nice hop on that. Yeah, get that quick well, get hop. Get excited working. about those uh, running backs. Still should be the pass situation for Montana. Redskins showing blitz, step out of it. And they take it wide with Roger Craig. And Craig cuts it back, breaks it loose to the 43 for a 49er first down. Oh. And tippers are flaring somewhat. That was the funniest thing. That's Monty Coleman, Monty. who is very agitated. He was down on the ground and just couldn't get up, and so he was just kicking the daylights out of that guy. And they have <laughs> dropped the flag. Here is our referee, Dick Jorgensen. That was wild. Personal fall, 51, defense, unnecessary roughness. Personal fall, 81, offense, unnecessary roughness. All after the play was over. And they never quite know for sure who started the altercation. Fourth down. I thought they got the first down on the play. It's first down. It's first down. There you go. That was a nice uh, run by Roger Craig, you know. Look at that comparison there. Riggins, Tyler. Of course, when you got the passing game going, that helps the running game. And Tyler's had the benefit of Joe Montana having a very successful night. And down 20 to nothing if it remains that way. I hardly, well, I don't imagine we'll see much of Riggins in the second half. The Redskins are going to have to put it in the air and keep it in the air. Montana on first and ten. Tyler. Oh, great oh, yeah. move and quickness. He's inside oh, oh. Redskin territory at the 49-yard line. Nine-yard pickup. It'll be second down and one, and we get the two-minute warning here at Candlestick Park, and we're going quickly to Jim Lampley in New York.
Well, Frank, with the spinning moves of Wendell Tyler, you are reminded somewhat of Walter Payton. He passed a milestone yesterday. There may be another bigger one later in the season, but on this 10-yard run in the second quarter, Walter Payton became the new NFL record holder in combined yardage, rushing, receiving, and kick returning. Of course, he, along with Franco Harris, is chasing Jim Brown for the all-time rushing record. And after the game, Walter had this to say about his latest accomplishment. The official came up and he gave me the ball, and I was taking it to the sideline and then you know to see the response of the crowd in the uh in the stands uh, you know it, that means a lot because it, regardless of uh, what you do or uh, what you say or what you accomplish if you don't have uh, have that appreciation by the people that you're doing it for then it, it really doesn't mean anything and i think that that meant the most to me as far as the records or anything else that, that i accomplished today Walter Payton is now 448 yards from breaking the record of Jim Brown. He went nine years, rolled for 12,312 yards, nine years and 14 game seasons, I might add, for the great Jim Brown. Franco Harris, 317 yards back after yes yesterday. But our congratulations to Walter Payton. He is one of the fun people to watch play this game. Uh, well, I asked you last year in the Miami game, Frank, which would be the player you choose if you can take any active player. And my choice at the time was Walter Payton. What's amazing to me is Walter has done it without a real veteran quarterback over all these years. He's we'll talk about quarterbacks. that a Second down and one as we return to the action here at Candlestick Park. The 49ers with the football in command of the game as Roger Craig will be stacked up at midfield, short of the first down. Seconds ticking off, and we are going to get a San Francisco 49er timeout. The 49ers have two timeouts remaining. It'll be third and three when we come back. Here's Jim Lampley. Dave Craig, which helped to separate Seattle from San Diego yesterday. This 37-yard run out of the shotgun in the third period gave Seattle a 17-10 lead. You see the statistics there for Craig running on the day. The Seahawks were on their way to a 31-17 victory, significant in the game. The first appearance in a Seattle uniform of Franco Harris. And on his very first rushing attempt, Harris gained six yards off left tackle. This was to be his longest carry of the day as Franco was on his way to a 46-yard game in his new Seattle uniform. From Betrayal Hill, you know. My neighborhood's around here. <laughs> Third down and three, the 49ers right at midfield. They have two timeouts for video. Craig pops it for the first down and steps out of bounds, killing the clock inside the 41-yard line with 145 remaining right. in the half. Neil Oklowitz is over there defensively for the Redskins. This Craig is really a deceptive runner to watch because he has so much explosion once he breaks into the open. Now, he has that, he has that long stride like um, uh, the great, uh, uh, excuse me, the great Dallas runner used to have, Dwayne Thomas, and he reminds me of Dwayne quite a bit when he runs the ball. Same number. 33. Craig now, 28 yards, eight attempts. The 49ers, another first down. They have two timeouts remaining. They're at the Redskins 41-yard line. Montana gets the screen off, and Craig twice now. He's taken his eyes off that football, and he is a good receiver ordinarily. We mentioned he had nearly 50 receptions a year ago. And flags now are flying as there is another altercation at the 25-yard line. They're really after Russ Francis tonight. They must have heard his pregame prediction. It's going to be a long night for him. He had about four of the Redskins around him that time. That's Francis, who took the season off of 81 after retiring from New England. 49ers gave up a first-round pick and a fourth-round pick to get Russ. Foul. Unnecessary roughness. 81, offense. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. 52, defense. Penalties offset. Second down. That's Okowitz, number 52, the middle linebacker. Francis doing a little Billy Goat type of block. And they just stay with it. <laughs> well, Russ is fired up, there's no question about that. He might have got caught in that face mask. <laughs> San Francisco, 18 first downs, Washington two. Second down and 10 for the 49ers. Craig. Moves up to the line of scrimmage. Cooper in motion. And this time, good coverage by the Redskins. Roger Craig, the intended receiver, along with Wendell Tyler. And they were picked up and covered well. 
Vernon Dean, Tony Peters were there along with Rich Malott. Against these same 49ers in 1981. They, the Redskins, they just don't have it clicking quite yet, do they? Joe will get it worked out. He's done a good job there. Well, as that graphic show, they certainly have the ability to come back. They've been in the Super Bowl the last two years, and they'll try to make a comeback before this game's over. It's third down and long yardage. Protection for Montana. And he nice was call. able to get the ball to Dwight Clark, but it, it was the good protection he got. He wanted to go to another receiver, or maybe Dwight Clark. Dwight Clark was covered. And with the protection he had, he was able to get the first down. And Dwight Clark is slow getting up. Well, it certainly helps when you're at 6'4". As I said, this uh, Redskin team, team that's been to the Super Bowl the last two years, not three years, the team that's capable of coming back, but not... Not when you got run, you have a guy run a pattern like that, and that's 6'4", able to get up there and get the ball. He did a nice job, didn't he, of uncovering there. Little Tony fight. Washington, the defensive Redskin, slipped, but again, the offensive line, giving Montana time to wait until Dwight Clark uncovered. Another 49er first down. Oh, yeah. And another completion, Earl Cooper, and he is close to another first down, perhaps a half a yard short. And that noise you're hearing is coo coo coo, coo, coo that you coo. get here for Earl Cooper. 49ers stop the clock. They have one timeout remaining. Well, we've brought you three games in the last eight days. And let's keep it up. Denver and Cleveland go on Sunday night. A pair of teams that are hurting. And then on Monday night, Don and I'll be in Cleveland, and then O.J. and I'll be up in Buffalo. He loves to go back to Buffalo. Yeah. It's going to be nice that Joe Ferguson, uh, they reported he broke his nose. Well, he didn't break his nose. They expect him to practice uh, Thursday. And the way that team's going, they, that's good news for the Buffalo Bills. And Cleveland and Denver, the game we're going to do, those, those two teams got to get it going in a hurry. Denver got shut out by the Bears last week, and that's something very unusual for them. Fairly offensive-minded old pile of mine, Danny Reeves. 19 first down for the 49ers now. Washington has a couple. 46 offensive plays run off by the 49ers. Washington has managed only 18. Montana, 15 of 27, 186 yards and a touchdown. It's been the 49ers' first half. Second down and about a yard. That's the time remaining in the first half. Craig in motion, gets into the pattern. Montana looking for Clark, he's wide oh, yeah. open. He did a number <laughs> on Tony Washington, who was taken apart last week by Miami. And that's what they wanted to see from Dwight Clark, the drive, breaking it into the post and then breaking it to the corner. He had individual coverage. Well, that was great and missed him first. Look, he looks inside. And there's that move to the outside. Derek Harmon, it looks like, is the guy that gets over this. Yeah, well, what yeah. made that play go? Was he was able to avoid Green at the line of scrimmage. He was supposed to hold him up a little bit to give Washington time to get over there. Yeah, right. Actually, that was on the wrong side of the page there. That was Tony Washington's right. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing, drills it through. Somebody could have told me that. Somebody <laughs> flipped your flip card. That's right. <laughs> it looks a lot like Tony Washington. 27 to nothing, and I'd like to be a fly on the wall for what's going to happen at halftime in the locker room with the Redskins. I don't think Joe Gibbs is a demonstrative type of coach, but he has certainly been given a lot to demonstrate against. They have been beat defensively. They have not been able to produce the offense. And it's hard to believe we're looking at a team that was 14 and two last season. They lost two games in regular season. They lost to Green Bay by one point in a marathon, 48-47, and they lost 30-31 to the Dallas Cowboys in the opener. Perhaps exposed somewhat in the Super Bowl when they were blown away by the Raiders 38-9. Do they love it up here, OJ? Go Niners. They waited long enough. You know, they waited about 30 years before they got a championship a couple of years ago, and they love this 49er team. Ray Walsh came in in 79, and 49ers had only one winning season between 72 and 
when Waltz came in in 79. He didn't do too much that first year, but he really got things on track. His first season, he was 2 and 14 with you, OJ. Then they were 6 and 10 in 80. And then they win the Super Bowl against Cincinnati following the 81 season. That's Keith Griffin, the brother, younger brother of Archie Griffin and Ray Griffin of the famous Griffin families of Ohio State. We have the Griffins and the McCalls here tonight, haven't we? Yeah. Make it a good sitcom. I like our new toy. Yeah. I hope you like it. The running, of course, in the red. The black line is passing, and that's where that offensive drive started at their own 20-yard line. First down and 10, the Redskins. They would dearly love to get something on the scoreboard, but they have 107 remaining in the half. They're at their own 35. Bill Washington out of bounds, but not until he picks up a first down near the 46. Ronnie Lott playing on a very sore ankle. Was questionable tonight. He was the man who took Washington out of bounds. Well, I think they probably went into their book and took out every passing play they have because we're going to be seeing the Washington Redskins throw the ball in the second half, that's for sure. First and 10, 101, clock stopped and Washington stepped out of bounds. Feisman loses the ball, scrambles back and comes up with it. I'm telling you. Poor babies. I want my mama. Big sky. And we are going to have a timeout by the Washington Redskins. They now have two remaining. It was a loss of a yard on that play. The nation's capital is, at least through this first half, and morning tonight. They love the Redskins. They've had over 100 consecutive sellouts. They've provided some of the great thrills in this game over the past few years. And now, here is Joe Gibbs in his fourth year, as I mentioned earlier. Lost the first five games when he came in 1981. And truly remarkable after that. But this is also remarkable. San Francisco, 314 yards. Washington managing only 61. In the well, first half we're talking about. Yeah. And if Washington wants to blame anyone, that's Russ Francis. He's had a great first half. They can point the finger everywhere because the 49ers have been able to run on them. They've been able to pass on them. And that's why the Redskins hasn't been able to establish a running game or a passing game. Second down and 11. Heisman. Washington, good move. Oh, Joe Washington. Whoa, running. And he did not go for the first down. He was looking for the big play. Ronnie Lott made the stop. <laughs> Washington coming up with nine yards, so it'll be second down and one. Bill Walsh, he leaves nothing uncovered when he prepares a team to meet an opponent. We ask him how he prepared for tonight. I think both clubs have some good knowledge of each other because we spent considerable time uh, uh, analyzing each other before last year's playoff game. And uh, consequently, we went in knowing something about them and having some feelings as, as to how to attempt to stop them or attempt to move the ball. So we put a lot of football in early in the week, and then we've really tailed off. And the last three days, we've done very little, hoping that our legs will be fresh for this kind of a contest. Bill Walsh, and I think he might have had a handle on it. <laughs> well, he had no choice about resting those legs because virtually every linebacker they have has some kind of leg problem this, this week. He did. <laughs> Buns and Turner and their rookie Todd Shell all playing with hamstrings. Third down and one. Theismann. Monk. And Art Monk will have the first down of the 25 at the Redskins with one timeout remaining or running out of seconds. Theismann will try for the completion. If he doesn't get it, he'll throw it away and kill the clock. That old prevent defense that hasn't prevented much. <laughs> On first down. Washington. Scrambling inside the 20-yard line, and Feisman uses the final timeout with 16 seconds. And he'll talk it over with Joe Gibbs as to the possibilities that confront him. They want to make sure they get something on that board, but trailing 27 to nothing, you're not thinking a whole lot of field goals. Getting the exact count. Seems like to me a team gets started off like this Redskin team has. It, 
it's just they, they have a hard time getting back on track. I, I've seen teams do it, but it's, it's really hard. It's for some reason to get that rhythm off. They're not playing their game right now with 27 and nothing. Well, most times when this thing happens, they need to go to the locker room. Now, they'll go in at halftime, and normally it's hard to correct it, um, you know, during that first half, but they'll come back in the second half, and you'll see a totally different team. But unless they can correct it offensively and defensively, as we look at this <laughs> statistic, um, they're not going to get back in this football game. A lot of pride on this Redskin team, but interestingly enough, 10 players on tonight's roster suited up were not in uniform in the Super Bowl. And there's 17 players who played in the Super Bowl less than two years ago who are not in uniform tonight. There's been a lot of changes with Washington. The big names remain intact, Charlie Brown, Joe Theismann, Riggins, but there have been a lot of changes. Second down and seven. Looking for Charlie Brown. Good coverage in front by Lott. And help on the inside from the strong safety, Carlton Williamson. Double coverage on Charlie Brown. Yeah, it just was way overthrown, too. And that's mostly waiting. I don't, I don't, I would be surprised if he, well, they like to get on the board. I was going to say I'd be surprised if they kick a field goal at this point. One thing that uh, Bill Walsh has done by getting, um, you know, he really helped himself by getting Mario Clark. Mario Clark has always been a starter. And how could you foresee Eric Wright going down? But it certainly helps when you can go to your second unit and get a, a first-rate NFL cornerback to substitute. That's the time remaining. No okay. timeout. Third and seven. Trying to get it to Washington, hoping that he can get the catch and provide the run. It's incomplete. you got to think that's uh, really good defensive knowledge. Uh, you heard uh, Coach Walsh say they know what they do pretty well. You need know, a Keena Turner, so I mean, he just... Came right in and took that pass away from it. We'll see Mark Mosley. His career best of 54 yards set that NFL record in the 81 and 82 seasons of 23 consecutive field goals. Both very accurate kickers, Wershing and Mosley. And you wonder how they would do if they were kicking on artificial surface. Mosley on a 38 yard attempt. And finally, the goose egg is off the scoreboard. The Redskins pick up three. But they are down 27 to 3 as time expires here in the first half. It's been a tough night for the Redskins thus far. But this is a team that plays together a lot of pride. They'll go into the locker room, try and collect things, pull it together. But it will not be easy. They are playing a red hot 49er team, a streaky team, and a red hot Joe Montana. And the crowd loves it. Capacity crowd on hand, 61,000. Harmon, a rookie from Cornell, is also deep for the 49ers. And this will be Harmon. Had a great rushing career at Cornell. And he gets an opening, and Harmon out over the 30 to the 34-yard line. And Montana comes out to take over the offensive unit. 16 of 28, 211 yards, two touchdowns in that first half. And meanwhile, Joe Theismann, that's the two quarterbacks, Theismann with the helmet, that's Jim Hart, the 18-year veteran, on the right, talking with Joe Gibbs. The last time the Redskins trailed by 20 or more points at halftime was against San Francisco in 81. They trailed 24-3. They went on to lose 30-17. First and 10, the 49ers. Earl Cooper in motion. Montana, Joe Cooper, first down up close to midfield. Uh -huh. And another observation, no team has ever lost its first two games and gone to the Super Bowl. The last time Washington lost two in a row goes all the way back to that season of 81, the first year for Joe Gibbs, when they lost consecutively to Dallas and Buffalo. There was some deep thinking going on in the minds of these Redskins at halftime, I can guarantee you. First and 10. 49ers, their own 49-yard line. The flag is down as Wendell Tyler is upset. Good tackle by Vernon Dean. We'll have motion against the 49ers. Take a look at the numbers. They were predominantly, of course, 49ers. That's the first quarter. They already had 178 yards of offense. I'm going to translate that to halftime. It didn't change much. 314 yards of total offense and the time of possession again not quite half. Illegal but motion, number 88, offense, decline. Second down. Freddie Solomon getting the call. The 49ers 
They've had it completely their way, both offensively and defensively. It'll be second down and eight. Roger Craig and Carl Monroe, the two setbacks for the 49ers. Montana gets a lot of pass rush, primarily in the form of Daryl Grant, who missed last week's game and lost to Miami, but he is one of the fine pass rushers. And we don't know how much we'll be seeing of Big John Riggins in the second half. 49ers, of course, on top, 27-3. Let's pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. And this is Channel 7, KBC-TV, Los Angeles. <laughs> well, she was almost perfect. <laughs> Third and eight, the 49-yard line. Had her shot. <laughs> no, she picked her shot. Intended for Dwight Clark. Overthrown. Defensively, Tony Washington was there. And that will bring up a fourth down. We'll see the punting unit for the 49ers. That means Tom Orris and Mike Nelms will drop for the Redskins. And again, we see double coverage for the Redskins. Darrell Green. Off to the side, Alvin Garrett is back with Nelms. Nelms bobbles in at the 19 and buried at the 17. Some that was Virgil C, by the way, who was back on the punt. But the Redskins will start deep in their own territory. What's the old adage? Anything can go bad, it will. This is today's Chevrolet. Chevrolet Caprice Classic, one of the world's great automotive values. And for 13 years in a row, the full-size Chevrolet has been the best-selling car of its kind. It's easy to see why. Compare Caprice's deep cushion comfort, its ride, its full-size room, and its affordable price. You can, of course, spend more for a car. But why in the world would you? That's real value. That's today's Chevrolet. Heard him at the top of the show, if you're with us, said the Redskins are going to have a long night. And he was hit it right on the nose. Reagan stays on the bench. Joe Washington, the man who can run the football as well as catch it out of the backfield, is in there as the setback number 25. And he's had some great games. Seismic. Fires complete over the middle, and it goes to Don Warren, the tight end. Warren out over the 30-yard line will have a Redskin first down. And his helmet really rattled the head. Take a look at the scoring as it transpired quarter by quarter. Tyler in there in the first possession. They scored again on the second possession. Then Washington made it 17 to nothing. It was Washington to make it 20 to nothing. Then Montana to Clark for a 15-yard touchdown. And Mosley with a few seconds left with the Redskins on the scoreboard with a three-pointer. Seismic. That's out of bounds, and not until he picks up about five yards. It was Carlton Williamson taking Theismann out of bounds. So it'll bring up a second down and five. It was interesting watching Joe on the sideline with Coach Joe Gibbs. It appeared to me, Don, as if Joe Gibbs was talking to him about the mechanics of throwing the ball. No strategy, just how to release the ball there. Well, he couldn't, obviously couldn't see. I don't know either, but it looks like what they've done, obviously, has come out with a whole new philosophy this second half. They're trying to get points on the board. And they're going to be throwing that ball a lot. They're going to probably try to hit those. So where do these guys go? Let's hit some zone to do something. And I don't know down and five. Monk is in motion. Joe Washington. Uh -huh. Washington has the first down, gets up to the 45-yard line. The little man who first came up Max to San Diego Boy. back in 1976. First round pick. Can do some amazing things for his size. And the amount of pounding that his knees have taken over the years. Yeah, when you consider this offseason, he had orthoscopic surgery on both his knees to be able to come back. After all the problems he's had, uh, physical problems he's had in the past, he's still performing at top level. Once with Baltimore, he was traded there in 78 from San Diego. He led the league in receiving. First and 10, the Redskins. They're at their own 46, and this is Washington. A big opening, and Washington inside. 49er territory after a game of six. It'll be second down and four. Stuckey defensively there for the 49ers, number 79. Well, one, 
I saw him one night, O.J., up in Buffalo. On a <laughs> Wouldn't it be night. Buffalo? Or was it New England? <laughs> New England. I guess it was New England. He had about 270 yards of offense. He ran a kickoff back for a touchdown. In he the rain. for a touchdown. Caught a touchdown. And it all in the rain. It was pouring rain. Remember, Don? Yeah, that was really a, quite a show. Second down and four. The ball at the 49ers, 49-yard line. Five minutes. Muck is open, and Muck uh, comes down uh, with it at the 30. Good concentration. First down, Washington. White Hicks defensively there for the 49ers. And this is a little more like it, Washington fans are saying, all over the capital area. It appears they just got that field divided about four zones. They're sending them right straight, trying to throw between the linebackers. And there's Muck. He gets there right before Dwight Hicks. Plays a pretty good lick on him. 49ers, with all their injuries, like so many teams we've seen in the past when they have been hurt, they play a little bit over their capabilities. They did that in the first half. And deflected, intended for Charlie Brown. Incomplete. What they're doing now is they don't expect Washington to run too much, so those linebackers are really getting off the ball quickly. Coming on back pretty, that's a good drop by Pornhorse that time, 55, but all of them are really dropping pretty deep, so it's going to make it harder for Joe to complete them in that middle zone. Jim Pornhorse was a nice find for the 49ers. He's a brother of the 49ers fine uh, offensive tackle, Keith Pornhorse, and he was, at, he was at the Arizona Wranglers over in the USFL. One of the first guys to jump from that league into this league in farewell. Second down and 10. The ball to the 30-yard line of the 49ers. Eisman back. Good pass yeah. blocking, and Feisman gets the ball to Virgil C. And C will have another Washington first down close to the 15-yard line. And the Redskins, who started deep in their own territory, are on the move. He's working on Dave. McLemore, Dana McLemore, but that's, this is going to be a good throw. Joe had that ball released for a good, strong throw to the outside. And we are seeing McLemore in there with a 27-3 lead at halftime. I think Coach Bill Walsh wanted to give Ronnie Lott a breather. Ronnie Lott, with a very severely sprained ankle, played the first half at that right cornerback. John Riggins in the lineup. Weisman. Yeah the shot Charlie Brown is there and the Redskins put together what looks like an NFC champion drive almost a demonstrative penalty on the part of Charlie Brown but you're allowed to spike it under the new rules that this is ball again is well thrown two in a row that has been really thrown well downtown Charlie Brown comes across played pretty well actually not too Mario Clark your buddy there from Buffalo was he was in the area wasn't he not bad coverage when you're covering Charlie Brown man to man, but that ball was well thrown by Joe Thyssen. Here's Mark Moser to shorten up the 49ers lead. So the Redskins have pulled themselves together, at least in the early going here in the second half. Redskins down 27-10. We'll be back in a moment. The Redskins went 83 yards on the arm of Joe Theismann, Charlie Brown taking it in. Touchdown pass from Theismann from 14 yards out. Jeff Hayes to kick off. Carl Monroe and Derek Harmon are deep. Short kick. Bounding about and Carl Monroe finally has to fall on it. And the 49ers who were so fired up in the first half, they're making their own errors here in the second half. And let's take a look at the scoring drive. Remember it began all the way at the 17-yard line. It was the first concerted drive the Redskins have put together throughout the night started off basically with a pass they did that five passes they didn't run that much and that's because they've got their passing offense in there Joe Washington instead of John Riggins the 49ers now they realize they're gonna have to reach back and find some of the enthusiasm the emotion with which they played that first half first down and ten and here it is Solomon that helped yeah that that helped. first down up to the 34 yard line how many times do you see that where one team will win the first half and when you're playing against great teams it's almost as if you're looking at two different football games you know the second half the other team comes out and win the second half by a big score the 49ers felt coming into this game i talked to joe montana earlier today that they had to score 30 or more points to beat this team because of the problems that they've had with injuries and uh, to their defensive players and they may be right before it's over freddie sullivan now three receptions big ones 51 yards he just picked up the first down for the 49ers. That NFC title game. 
Eight months ago, Sullivan had a 76-yard touchdown reception. Wendell Tyler, Dexter Manley pursuing, and he's caught by Rich Malat. Tyler. Tyler. We'll get about three yards out of it to bring up a second down and seven. You get a feeling that San Francisco's offense is a little more balanced. Hacksaw, the Hogs. Hacksaw, of course, Jack Reynolds. 49ers, but they seem to be a little bit more balanced. Where they've got their good short passing game, they can go deep. You got Wendell coming in there, they can run. Craig can run a little bit. Second down and seven. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. 49ers over Washington, 27-10. Montana is back. Ooh. That almost picked off. And it, I think Carol he Green it. was going for it, and in a battle with Dwight Clark. Ball went through Green's hands, you're right, Frank, and I think it just stuck in Dwight's arms. <laughs> look what I have. It was right there. We'll check another look. Green playing bump and run. He can only bump him in the first five yards, but he is so quick. A former world-class sprinter, Daryl Green, and it went right through the fingers into the chest of Dwight Clark. He sees Dwight's got that like an old carrot of watermelon. He says, how did I wind up with that ball? And he'll bring out the sticks for the measurement. It'll be very close. The 49ers, first down. If they could carry this drive in for a touchdown, it would really take a lot of wind out of the sails of the Redskins. They came back, went 87 yards. If they can hold the 49ers, get the ball back, put some more points on the scoreboard, they could well be back in this. Wide receivers now are Mike Wilson, 85, and Ronaldo Nehemiah, number 83. Whoa, he and got it. Pressure on Montana. He had to throw it away, and he was really hammered. He stays on the turf. Man, I tell you, that was Daryl Grant that was back there, and he really got a lick on it. It's his second sack of the night, and Montana is hurt. Whoa. That's the classic position that the quarterback doesn't want to get in. And that's with the arm raised and delivering that thing. You expose the ribs. Your own momentum into the tackler. That's right. Joe Montana being treated. And this crowd of 61,000 all of a sudden are very silent. I scraped together. Don, you know about receiving these kind of shots. Well, you're just in such a vulnerable position because you see the arm goes up. And watch that helmet goes right into the ribs. Oh. It appears, because Montana did get up and walk off, but it appears it was just knocked the breath out of him, but that's the way you break some ribs. Montana does come out. He appeared to be all right, and Matt Cavanaugh has come into the game. That's Montana on the sideline. That's Montana acquired last week, or last year from New England for a second-round draft pick. Played in 52 games in New England over six years. Started eight in 1981. He was a starter for three in 82, and he has not thrown a pass either preseason but in preseason, oh. there's a fumble by Tyler. And the Redskins are saying they get it. A team that led the NFL in the takeaway, giveaway ratio by plus 43 last year gets the football back in midfield. And it was Wendell Tyler who has had this problem over his career that gave up the football. And it looks as though Daryl Grant was there. I just, excuse, I just asked a minute ago. That's the first turnover of the night. Yes, it is. And you can see once again, Wendell is tackled. He's trying to fight for those extra yards. and. Historically, that's when that ball normally comes out, and in this case, it's Washington Redskins ball at midfield. Daryl Graham with a sack on Montana that took him out of the game, and he recovers the fumble. Washington, first down at midfield. Flips his arm. Theismann. Cool. The man man open and almost picked off by Dwight Hicks, Art Monk, the intended receiver, but Theismann feeling the pressure of the blitz. There he is. He's played himself a football game tonight. Daryl Grant, he missed last week's game with a slight injury. And he has been a performer tonight. And the word from the bench is that Joe Montana just had the wind knocked out of him. I'm sure we'll see him on the next offensive series for the 49ers. Well, what we're witnessing defensively uh, for the 49ers is the absence of Fred Dean. It appears as if they're going to have to get Dean back because they're going to have to mount some type of pass rush or the Redskins are going to get back in this game. Red Dean, of course, a holdout. They're still negotiating. John McVeigh of the 49ers negotiating with Dean's representative. That one's deflected, yeah. intended for Art Munt, deflected at the line of scrimmage. 
I think Louis Kelcher is in there, number 94. He's an interesting story. He retired after nine games with, with San Diego a year ago. 49ers swapped a whole bunch of choices in the middle of San Diego in the order of their draft to get Louis Kelcher, who came in the third week of training camp, or actually before the third preseason game, and they really, I don't think, knew how much he weighed. The <laughs> scales don't go that high. Now, one thing we know, he's academically very strong. Mm, we understand, yeah. Tony. That's from you, huh? That's it. Third down and ten. The full blitz on Thyssen. He reads it. Hangs it up. And it's Art Monk. Good job by Monk. Good athlete. He was a fantastic athlete with Monk at Syracuse. A good running back. Good receiver. Shattered all kinds of records up there. Says a 101. Frank called the blitz, which really was right in there pretty good. You see Mario Clark trying to keep up with him. Lost, I lost contact with the ball, and Monk didn't. He came back, made the reception. Good move, Bart. I can remember so many times when Joe Namath would hit Sauer or Maynard, throw that ball yeah, behind, behind him, him, going down the sideline when the defender wasn't watching. Monk, five receptions, 100 yards. The Redskins inside the 21-yard line of the 49ers, trying to get back in the game. Tyson, wide open field. And steps out of bounds before he can get the first down, but he'll be second and short. Heads up play, Joe Theismann, who, like Montana, was rattled in the first half when he was hit a shot to the head. It's kind of offensive pattern you call that was kind of a turn in and then go by his two wide receivers. They're going to try to get the defensive secondary to commit themselves and try to get a touchdown. Secondary didn't fall for it, so... Uh, he had to run it. Had him covered pretty well downfield. They marked it at the 14, so it'll be second down and three. Heisman now has 34 yards rushing. That will tell you the kind of pass protection he's been given. Birds will see in the lineup, number 80, top of your screen. That's Monk in motion. Heisman hanging it for Charlie Brown. That's down, look like. No, he says he's out. And Gibbs is saying that Ronnie Lott Drove him out of bounds. Charlie Brown had possession. He is saying, so is Gibbs, but they will not allow the completion. Keep in mind, if he catches this ball and is driven out of bounds by Lott, then it should be a completion. Not a real good angle to see that one. Let's look at it again from another angle. That defender drives you out of bounds. I'd say that was really close because the route. The official that calls it's the one who's behind those guys. Not sure he could have come down with both feet in, however. That's true. Even Ronnie Lott's feet came down out of bounds. Third down and three. This one, an important down for Washington. Feisman drills it in, gets the completion to Charlie Brown. He'll have the first down inside the 10. It'll be first down, goal to go. Somehow you knew it would happen. That's that control rollout that the Redskins use. That was not being forced out of the, the pocket. He goes back, sets up, then rolls to his right, brings those offensive linemen with him, and then Charlie kind of slipped in on the middle, picked up the first down. The option you have there is that if Charlie would have been covered, then Joe can run and give a signal for those linemen to go downfield and block. The Redskins coming back, showing the form that has carried them to the past two Super Bowls. They have a first down goal to go. Riggins back in the lineup. Drives the middle. Riggins, 240 pounds of Riggins, surging inside the four-yard line. It'll be second down goal to go. He's definitely rested because he hasn't run that much tonight. I know the New York Giants, who will meet the Redskins next Sunday in the nation's capital, are watching tonight's game, and they are watching two different teams. The Redskins of the first half terribly inept, both offensively and defensively, but notably the Phil Sanders already with seven touchdowns. Lawrence Taylor, who's chewing everyone up, they're looking on with a great deal of interest. Uh-huh. Riggins. And if they hold him out of the end zone at the two. And if Folks out there think that O.J. and I haven't heard about the Giants this weekend. <laughs> Are you? I, I've never heard so much in my life, have you? No, no, no. no big job. How I've about the Giants? How about the Giants? Well, Don, you may have to admit I did leave out yesterday's score. But yes, you <laughs> did. <laughs> How about the Giants? I think the Giants are going to see this Redskins uh, team next week. Uh, this team is finally 
has awakened after last week and this week, first half this week. I think this is a Redskin team you're going to see the rest of this season. Keep in mind, they were down 27-3 at halftime. They now trail 27-10. They are knocking at the door. Wiggins, you get him going laterally, and he's not effective at all. And the 49ers forced him to step outside, and that is not the route that Wiggins likes to take. They got, actually, Big Mark May couldn't make his move very quick to the outside, and it looked to me as if Wiggins ran into Mark. You got to well, go at this point, 27-10. You need a touchdown. Yeah. Not three. And if you keep, uh, and if you're the Halls up front, they got a big reputation. You got a big fullback, Riggins, who broke the NFL record for touchdowns, running most of them in from here. You're supposed to make this. It's fourth down. The stadium on its feet. It's the partisan 49er crowd. It'll be Riggins. Go off tackle. Riggins. Yeah. And we have a different football game. <laughs> We knew we would. <laughs> I'm not glad we do. <laughs> Just hope he's still with us. I'll tell you, he came over the top that time. Yeah, and not to be denied. That is his 84th rushing touchdown. He moves into sole possession of third place in the history of the NFL. You kind of get a feeling he's going to score about right there, don't you? I am going in. Well, I tell you, he scored, what, 23, 24 touchdowns last year. I think about 18 of them were from uh, this distance, and he's almost unstoppable from there. NFL record, 24 of a year ago. Mosley brings it ever closer. Washington down, down by 10. They trail 27-3 at halftime. We have 5:04 remaining in the third quarter. I wouldn't go away. Points and quiet a crowd that was having a ball in the first half. Redskins playing back to their NFC championship form of a year ago. Jeff Hayes to kick off. Carl Monroe is deep along with Derek Harmon. This one will be taken short. Now it bounces. And finally, Carl Monroe has to dive on it. And all the things that went wrong for the Redskins now are happening to the 49ers. And let's take a look at the scoring drive with our new toy. And love it. All right. The runs are in red. Passes are in black. Remember, Daryl Grant getting the fumble recovery at midfield. Wendell Tyler coughing it up for the 49ers. They got down inside that 10, and they give the ball to Riggins, and that's how they got it over. They've done that so well in the last few years. First down and 10. Uh, the way to get some of the wind out of the Redskins is to put some points on the board, and Montana knows that. Tyler. And he's stacked up, and this is a different Redskin team. They are hitting entirely different in the second half. I want to remind you, Sunday, September the 16th, live at 3 o'clock Eastern time, baseball coming your way, Kansas City Royals and the Seattle Mariners, Kingdom and Seattle, Minnesota Twins and the Texas Rangers. The American League West is where you will find baseball's hottest pennant race. Top teams scrap it out as the Royals take on the Mariners or the Twins against the Rangers. And the Twins right now are winning big. They're leading 7-3, to three, top of the ninth inning. And if they win tonight, it looks like they have a good possibility of doing just that. They will tie Kansas City for first place. The race is really there. Second down and eight. Oh. Montana chased out of the pocket. Look out. Here comes Dexter. Montana fires a shot, and it's complete. Freddie Solomon. They needed that one. First down for him. Well, the last two times they got the ball, they were able to get a first down, but somehow they sort of bogged down once they get to midfield. They need a score right now. They need a score real bad because this Redskins team is fired up. The first turnover. We've seen it relatively, you know, we've seen so many turnovers the first few games this year. It's nice to see one where they're not throwing it to the other guys. At the 27-yard line, the 49ers. Trying to take some of the steam out of the Redskins, who are really fired up here in the second half. That is Roger Craig. He slips, comes to his feet, and gets a yard or a yard and a half out of it. It'll be second and long. Going to run down the rest of the baseball scores. Games that are finally looking at three of them there. A couple of partial scores. That's the Kansas City-Minnesota game we spoke of a moment ago. Win by the Twins, and they move into a first-place tie with Kansas City and the Cubs. Leading the Mets. Craig was able to get up close to the 30-yard line, so it'll be second down and three. Dwight Clark back in the game, number 87, wide receiver at 49ers. Play action by Montana. Grand pressure, but he gets the ball off. Gets it to Solomon, who's having a great night. 
that was a really smooth run. Smooth, smoothly run play right that time. He made a little play fake. Watch Montana. Has a little quick fake to the... Yes, it was Wendell. Tucks that ball in. Solomon comes back to his outside. That was right on the money. Good move. I tell you, over the years, they've, the 49ers have looked for someone to take Freddie's place. Because sometimes you question his uh, motivation, but he's always made the big play, and he's always there, and that's why he's still here. He's in his 10th year, Fred Solomon, and he's having a big night. 49ers from their own 43-yard line. Tyler. And the darting one gets up close to midfield, a gain of about six and a half, seven yards. Got around that corner in a hurry, didn't he? mentioned earlier the fumble problem that Tyler has started to overcome somewhat in the last three years ended a night and he's fumbled once tonight that resulted in a Redskins score a few moments ago he had fumbled more than any other back in the NFL 28 times Heisman and he wants to get back in there he is some competitor he turned 35 yesterday makes him a Virgo doesn't it? second down call it a long three He'll never get away from Green, the former world-class sprinter, running down at about 10 yards. And I know Mike Wilson was stunned, but <laughs> he should have been aware that Daryl Green may be the fastest back, at least he was last year, until Ron Brown came in in football today. Well, he was wide open. Hey, got open in a hurry. That had to be a mess up. Well, he's aware of him because he keeps looking back. Now, with his height at 6'4", he should turn around and stiff arm the little guy right on his helmet, skip out of it, but it's a 44-yard gain. You don't have much respect for those little folks, do you? <laughs> he just is always thinking about running with that ball, isn't he? <laughs> How do you get a run with it? Some more. That was an important play for the 49ers. <laughs> They'll have a first down goal to go at the six-yard line. Montana, 22 of 37, 314 yards, two touchdowns. Craig, and the skins can be tough down here. I tell you one thing, I, I saw Daryl Green run Tony Dorsett down last year, keep Dorsett from scoring a touchdown, and it turned out it kept Dallas from scoring a touchdown not because he, they held him and they had to kick a field goal. Not that he runs them down, you know, he's 10.08 or 100 meters, but he runs them down so fast. That's the end of the third quarter. Different kind of football game coming your way now. Washington is shortened. The San Francisco 49ers. That story and Walter Mondale's plan to cut the federal deficit here at 11 o'clock. That from the world of baseball. We begin the fourth quarter with the 49ers. With the football, second down, goal to go. They're at the Washington Redskins, seven-yard line. About Diane on the East Coast. They've got Marie, a tropical storm, moving up the coast here on the left coast, as they like to say out here. Down of back, second down, goal to go. He can take it a long way. That's the end zone, Montana. Chased out of the pocket. Takes it in from seven yards out. The man can do a lot of things. And you got to admire the way he put his head down. He had the wind knocked out of him just moments ago. Put his head down and went across like Riggins. Yeah, this kid tough. There is the pressure. He got it once again from Grant. You look out to the outside. He had a pretty good pressure from Dave Butts. He ran away from Dave. Coleman couldn't come up number 51 for the Redskins because he had a man behind him working a pattern. And look at Wendell Tyler. It, it was Wendell's block down there on the goal line that enabled Montana to get in the end zone. Ray Rushing for the uprights and the 49ers. Well, we have flags now, several flags down. Oh, and twice again. tonight, the 49ers will have to take the penalty and kick the conversion once again. I wonder if it's old McCauley again out there on the outside, hugging them as they go by. Well, the way the Redskins' offense is going, I think they needed that touchdown. Holding number 67. Yeah. Offense, one more try. He should explain to them he's not holding them, he's hugging them when they go by. Don McCauley, and I think he's out there on Daryl Green. And Daryl Green with that great speed. Macaulay is making sure that Daryl Green does not get to Wershing's placement. You'll see it. He's 67, far right of your screen. That's Daryl Green right on his outside shoulder. And once again, he grabs Daryl Green. <laughs> Didn't hug him quite as hard that time. 
All right, we'll be returning to Candlestick Park. Montana passed for four touchdowns in two different games last season. One on an ABC Thursday night edition, the other on the final Monday night game against Dallas. back live now. Wershing set to kick off. Mike Nelms has dropped for the Redskins. That could have taken a lot out of the Redskins. He came back with 14 quick points in the third quarter. Here comes Nelms. Spins to the outside. A flag is down as Nelms gets back to the 32-yard line. 13-yard return. Dick Jorgensen, our referee tonight, sorts it out. It's not a very long kick, was it? And the Redskins will be backed up. While they backed them up, we'll tell you that live at 3.30 Eastern time this Saturday, Oklahoma against Pittsburgh from Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Head coach Barry Switzer leads his Oklahoma Sooners east to battle the Pittsburgh Panthers. And you'll see it right here on ABC. CFA College Football on ABC. Live at 3.30 Eastern time. They were anticipating a record crowd here tonight. That would mean they'd have to get a shoehorn to get them in because they've had a lot of sellouts. We are told it's the fourth largest crowd in Candlestick Park's history. On first down, finds, yeah. Monk, finds Art Monk. And Monk, who's having a big night, will get the first down for the Redskins out close to the 44-yard line. Seisman got a pretty good hit from Dwayne Board that time. We'll see it come back in. Board 76. Oh. And Joe kind of looks up. And wham. Well, you didn't see that. It was Monk Ford, was though, and yeah. without Fred Dean in the lineup, Ford is perhaps the best pass rusher of these 49ers. I don't know if you saw Dwight Hicks make the tackle, but he got his head down a little too low. I think he got kicked in the head, and he has really seen stars. They can ill afford to lose any kind of defensive back as Dwight Hicks sort of staggers off the field. I told you earlier, Eric Wright is out for several weeks, a fine cornerback on the left side. Ronnie Lott played the first half, but he's... Well, now he's back in the lineup. He has a very severely sprained ankle, and now Hicks is out. And in comes Tom Holmo, fourth-round pick a year ago, and principally has been a nickelback. He is now in the lineup. First and ten. Five minutes. That's what you need. That was an off. That's an offside though by San Francisco, so they'll bring that well, one back. Flag is down. Jeff Fuller on the safety blitz. Yeah, somebody's quick, but they're not that quick. There are two flags down. Well. Offside. Offside. So a sack is negated. And it'll be first down and five. Those are the stats from halftime through the third quarter. Game still dominated by San Francisco total yardage, but Washington has shortened it up considerably with third quarter play. They've picked up 14 points. First down of five for the Redskins. The ball inside their 49-yard line. Joe Washington, number 25, in the backfield now for the Redskins. Walker in motion. This is that moving pocket. Wide open. Wide open. It's Warren, the tight end, and Warren is down to the 27-yard line for another skin first down. <laughs> Don was not really looking to go very far on that one. He said, there got to be somebody around here. I can't be that wide open. Interesting how they set up that pocket. They bring Walker in motion. He becomes part of the offensive line, which sort of peels back, and it gives Theismann a good shield to the outside and utilizes what he can do so well, and that is scramble if he has to. Still at 35, a fine athlete. Dwight Hicks back in the safety for the 49ers. in motion. Seisman under pressure, but he gets a shot off that Charlie Brown characteristically does not hold on to. I think he threw it a little early, Frank. Charlie hadn't come out of his break that time. That ball was not saying he couldn't have caught it, but it, it may be a throw early. Well, what we spoke about last week down in Anaheim, Charlie was trying to make his break on this infield and looked like he was yeah, skating there a that, little bit. Good and point. I didn't, didn't have his balance. He was well, open. That'll bring up second down and ten. Here's the cut. They're still playing baseball, of course, here. The Giants at Candlestick Park. There's the attempt at a cut. 
He's not a, a plant your foot and cut. He's sort of a square corner, if you will. Second and ten. Heisman. Oh, oh, good oh, play. A good defensive play by Fuller, the rookie out of Texas A&M, a fifth-round draft pick on Art Monk. That really was a good play because anything else would have been pass interference. He stayed right there and had one move, and that was to jump right in front of him. Hullabaloo, Kudnick, Kudnick, Hullabaloo, Kudnick. Those Aggies, you got to watch them, you know? Theisman coming back, 17 to 30, 225 yards, a touchdown. Third down and 10. 13.05 remaining in the game. San Francisco, 34, Washington, 17. Birds will see the top of your screen. Heisman Muck is there and yeah. Muck holds on to it inside the 10, down close to the 7 before he's upended by Dwight Hicks. It'll be first down and goal to go. Look at it from this angle, you're going to see that Art goes into the inside. This ball is thrown right there. He had his man beaten, and here comes Hicks coming in from the other side. Art pretty well figured he was going to be close, so he ducked in there to meet him. Leading Mario Clark from the Buffalo Bills, who came to the 49ers this year. Mario probably said, I didn't know they had those kind of receivers over that league. First down, goal to go. Heisman gets it into Joe Washington. Does he hold on? If so, it'll be inside the one. Yes, he does. And you'll see Riggins, I'm sure, now. I tell you, the Skins have put two good drives together this second half. They've moved the ball. If you weren't with us earlier, it was all 49ers in the first half. They had run off a 27 to nothing lead before the final play of the half when we got a Mosley field goal to make it 27-3. And the Redskins are threatening to shorten it to 10 once again. Riggins. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ball game time. Yeah, and now I'm looking at the Joe Theismann we're accustomed to watching. He's jumping up and down. He's slapping hands. <laughs> now they went off to the left the time before and come back to the right this time. Basically the same plate. John thought he might have to jump over, but there was a hole there that time. Reagans gets his second touchdown of the night. And Mosley will be there to try to shorten the lead to 10. Slow in getting it down, but it's to the uprights. And it's San Francisco 34, Washington 24, 11 42 remaining in the game. Well, it's going to tool around in the blimp as Pilot Dick Esch is doing with our cameraman Charlie Mitchell. You may as well do it in San Francisco. Beautiful night. Fog starting to come in somewhat. Temperatures have dropped off from a tremendous heat wave they've had here over the past few days. Jeff Hayes the kickoff. Carl Monroe, number 32, is deep along with number 24, Gary Carmen. Here comes Derry Harmon, the rookie from Cornell. And Harmon out to about the 28-yard line. John Reagan, a couple of touchdowns tonight, but this is not the kind of game that he gets back into, although we may see him much more. Could the Redskins be able to hold the 49ers to get the football back, trailing only by 10? Second year man from Utah stays in a setback along with Roger Craig, number 33, for the 49ers. Joe so Montana changing things up. The blitz is on. They pick it up, and Dwight Clark is wide open. Dwight Clark wide open as he beats Vernon Dean. The blitz was on. Vernon Dean in man to man. And he was not a match for Dwight Clark. He's got him man to man. Clark is not known as their speedster. That was an automatic, too, Don. Could have been, Frank, because I, I, there's a little delay right there at the end of the line. That ball is well thrown. Good concentration by D. White. That's, that, they needed that one, didn't they? You saw Montana somehow watching the tipping the blitz. You saw him changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He knew he had have single coverage, and he gets it to Dwight Clark. First down and 10. The ball at the 16-yard line. Wendell Tyler, right side. That time, a good play. 
by Tony Peters. Peters, of course, coming back from a season of suspension, drug involvement. He's a two-year suspension, but the NFL was lifted. Bonnie Coleman seems to be the guy that's down for the Redskins there. Go look at it again. You see the blitz. You see it coming. Neil Okowitz, middle linebacker, comes in there. Malott also came. Almost looked like Daryl Green lost his balance when he, Dwight gave him a shot to the inside. He just couldn't catch up. Look, that was, look at this. I grew up watching a guy named Dave Parks yeah. do this for the 49ers, and Dwight reminds me so much of Big Dave. Texas Tech. It was Vernon Dean was the guy that was back on the defense there. Monty Coleman slow getting up. Hard hitting football game tonight. We've had a lot of rattle ball players. Both quarterbacks have been shaken up. Monty Coleman, they use him a lot on pass defense. That's Quentin. He's been in there a lot tonight. I think the best news for the 49ers tonight, besides the score at this point, is Dwight Clark looks as if he's getting back to his old form. He only caught two passes last uh, week, and he's the guy who's average. Uh, about 72 catches, 74 catches for the last four years. Take away Keller Winslow, and he's been the most prolific receiver over the past three years. Montana, play action. That one he just threw away. Russ France is well covered. Stops the clock with 10.06 remaining in the game. And it'll bring up third down and long. Third and nine for Joe Montana. Looks like he was throwing a mini alley-oop on that one. Yeah, he was. <laughs> you know, I keep up with statistics a lot. I'm into that, and I, I thought I'd share with you guys here in the booth if anybody's interested. It's been five years since the, 40, since the Redskins have given up 500 yards in total offense, and they are one yard short of that tonight. Solomon goes to the right. You're not interested in that? Right, okay? Clark, step to the left, third down and nine. Huh. I thought that was good. Wendell Tyler. Look out. And down goes Joe Montana. Gets the blitz from Dexter Manley on the right side. Dexter Manley just chucking off big Bubba Paris. And that is the Redskins' first sack of the season. We mentioned earlier they had nothing against Miami. They had no interceptions. They have no interceptions tonight, but they do get their first sack. Watch at the bottom of your screen. Going Dexter against Manley against big Bubba Paris. Big Bubba's really coming to his own. This is really the first sack the 49ers has given up this year. They had two last week, but one was on a fumble by Montana, and the other one, Montana had about eight seconds, and he just couldn't find a receiver. 38-yard attempt. Ray Wershing on fourth down. Montana gets it down. And one can only wonder with the record that Wershing has, how he would stand up in statistics if he were kicking somewhere but Candlestick Park where the wind swirls constantly. In the Superdome, a year ago against New Orleans, he kicked six. A full moon here in San, Fr San Francisco. The moon being distorted somewhat by the fog that is that's really, moving in. Yeah, that's really strange looking. I love it. I love the moon. I see the moon, the moon sees me. 9.49 to go as we look at Mike now. Gray Wishing kicks away. This will be Keith Griffin, and the flag flies, the ball going out of bounds, and they'll back Wishing up five yards. Out of bounds. Offense. And when they bring it back, we remind you tonight on Nightline with Ted Koppel, a look at the scandal that is rocking the art world. Are all of Salvador Dali's works authentic? Plus the latest on Hurricane Diana. That's tonight on Nightline following your late local news. And for those of you on the West Coast, be sure to stay tuned for a Barbara Walters special immediately following the game. Barbara Walters, our first lady of ABC News, celebrates seven years of her specials with segments taped from past programs. Many of them, of course, never broadcast. Swirching will kick from the 30-yard line. And that assures that there will be a Washington run back. Wershing is not a deep kicker on kickoffs. Nelms is in the middle, flanked by Virgil C. and Keith Griffin. Nelms from the 11-yard line. So many times, Mike Nelms comes up with a big return. That's and it's needed the most, and he gets to the 45-yard line before Milton McCall makes the stop. Watch 
it again. He then came down from Canada a few years ago where he had some remarkable games up there and doesn't have the big numbers, but three of the past four years, he has been the Pro Bowl returner for the NFC. Not well, great has, speed. Well, he has courage, and that's what the other players around the league respect. The old fights through tacklers. He never goes down without a fight. 25-yard line. Virgil C. stays in a wide receiver the Redskins. Joe Washington remains as the setback. The good receiver out of the backfield. Feisman goes to him. That one could have been picked off. Feisman had a lot of steam on it, but Keenan Turner is a very quick linebacker, and he was right there. Feisman looked at him the whole way that time, so gave Keenan a little bit advance notice that he was coming in his area, so he made the play for it. You know, Keenan was a great find for the 49ers a few years back. You know, he, from, he's from Chicago. He went to vocational high school, and there was one other real great linebacker from that high school, Dan. Who you I think don't know. Was? I don't know. Dick yeah. Butkus. From vocational high. Well, maybe the best that ever played. Second down and 10. The ball at the 45-yard line of the Redskins. 9.26 remaining in the game. Heisman. And he was off. This time he was short and perhaps fortunate that he was. It'll bring up third down and 10. Dwight Hicks defensively there. Third and 10. In the first quarter, in the first half, it was really all San Francisco. It was 27-3 at halftime. In the third quarter, the Redskins got a couple of touchdowns out of John Riggins. One following the only turnover we've had. And we are at 37-24. The 49ers over the Redskins. 9-19 remaining in the game, and the Redskins looking over a third down and 10. Feisman, pressure. And Looks like Pee Wee, Dwayne Board. Dwayne Board, who has moved over to the weak side because of the loss of Fred Dean. A flag is down. But I think it's against Washington. Dwayne Board played that left side, and Fred Dean was not signed. They moved him over to the right side. That would be the blind side for the quarterback, and they moved him there because he's the best pass rusher they have remaining. And we'll look at the call coming up, but I'll tell you something about Pee Wee. They, they call Dwayne Board Pee Wee, and he's, I think, the most valuable defensive lineman the 49ers uh, have. He had 13 and a half sacks, sacks last year, two in the playoffs. We take a look at him right there. Conduct. Number 73, oh. offense, striking an official. Huh. Mark May, unsportsmanlike conduct. Go ahead, O.J. He's saying huh? something nice uh, to the official by Mark May. But if you look at how the 49ers have played with and without Dwayne Board, they're 20, I mean, they're 30 wins, 11 losses without him. They're six wins, 15 losses uh, when he's not around. I mean, with him, they won 30 and lost 11. Without him, they won six and lost 15. He's a very valuable player for this San Francisco 49er team. Jeff Hayes to punt. McLemore for the 49ers following that penalty. Should be able to bring the ball back to pretty good field position. This one he'll stay away from. Makes a bit of a redskin bounce down close to the 36-yard line. But the 49ers now with 9.04 remaining. They need ball possession. got his seasons mixed up. Yeah, but his mother doesn't know where he is. That's Ray Jason, the juggler. Mm -hmm. I would have guessed that out of a multiple choice. Well, two of them are right, baseball and football, and basketball is going to be on us before we know it. 35-yard line, the 49ers, and the crowd is getting back in it. The 49ers with a 13-point lead. 9.04 remaining in the Redskins, threatening a blitz. The Niners come with the draw to Roger Craig, and there's an opening, and Craig picks up five at the 40-yard line. It'll be second and five, and we are going to allow our stations five seconds to identify themselves. Channel 7, KBC TV, Los Angeles. And those are the stations around the nation that are bringing you tonight's game. Not a, it's not so surprising to see the 49ers one, uh, run the football. You recall in the Super Bowl a few years ago when they had to get a score at the end of the game, they put the ball on the ground, even though they're known as a passing team. Second down, five. Kyler loses the ball, and the Redskins are there, but a flag is down. 
That's a, that is amazing. Dexter Manley has the ball, but again, a flag is down. Wendell Tyler, that would be his second fumble of the night, and the preliminary indication, it's against the 49ers and the Redskins have a lot of time left. They trail Holding by 13. Number 68, offense, decline. John Ayers holding, of course, decline. Dexter Manley gets the fumble, the second of the night from Wendell Tyler. Well, Wendell felt good coming into this game because last week they let him carry the ball twice uh, inside the 10-yard line, and he scored twice, so they showed they had some confidence in him. As in you the can wrong see hand, here. though, Jay. He's yeah, he did. the right hand on the inside. And he, that's where he gets. He lets that ball swing out, but... This is one thing you got to admire about him. He's fighting for those extra yards, and it's normally at that time that he'll fumble. That's 30 fumbles in three years. First and 10, 49-yard line. The Redskins have an opportunity. And down goes Feisman. Uh -huh. He's pursued and dropped. Ron Good Ferrari. Good play, Ron Ferrari. Yeah, Ron was a little faster than he's been anticipated. <laughs> Joe used to have a lot of speed. There's Dexter Manley. He's played a game tonight. Heisman used to, when Billy Kilmer was around, just because he wanted to play, he'd go in and run back punts. It'll be second down and nine. Kilmer Eight. says he still should be doing that. 8.08 remaining. Second and nine. The touchdown, and the Redskins could draw to within six. Joe Washington, good defensive play. He's up into Tina Turner was there. And there'll be no game. And Feisman now has a pressure down. Seconds ticking away. 7.50, the clock is moving. It'll be third down and nine. Well, that Tina Turner's like a cat, boy. He saw that play coming right away and got in there before the guard can trap him. Pinched it down. And the overall scheme of thing, uh, they should call him Pee Wee. Keenan Turner is only 219 pounds. Muck is in motion. The blitz is on. Feisman, receiver wide open, and he gets it to Virgil C. And C will have the first down inside the 35-yard line, right in front of Dwight Hicks, who with the blitz was in man-to-man -man coverage. One out of 11 in that third and long situation. C gets back, he gets Hicks turned a little bit, slows it up. Hicks is protected, of course, with that touchdown throw. Got him a first down. C, fourth year man out of Troy State. Good receiver, he just has a hard time getting into the lineup with Charlie Brown and Art Monk and Alvin Garrett. First down and 10. Five with plenty of time to pull this one out is incomplete. Two different football teams we watched tonight, and they're both wearing Redskin uniforms. The first half, they were lifeless, listless. They could do nothing offensively or defensively, trailing 27-3 at halftime, and they have battled back here in the second half. And it isn't that the 49ers have rolled over because they haven't. Well, it's had something. It may have something to do with the full moon, Don. Good, you know. I mean, yeah. the wolf man, you yeah. con, you know, two different people, two different. You know. They get the hog on full moon night. Eisman statistics are more than respectable now. Dismal at halftime. Second and ten. Eisman, Art Monk. Short of the first down is Art Monk, just outside the 25-yard line. Mario Clark defensively there for San Francisco. Here come the big guys in for the short yardage situation, and the biggest of the big guys, of course, is 44. I think, what I'm mistaken, uh, Riggins outweighs all the 49er linebackers. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can play for another 10 years if he has to just come in and score inside the five and get these first downs for him, because I... I've never seen a guy do it as consistently well as he has. Third and one. They'll have two downs, I'm sure, in their thinking to get it to the first down. Briggins. Uh oh he needs a couple of downs. Up, he pulls it out of bounds. Washington oh. retains possession. But Ronnie they now Lott. have a fourth down and about four. Ronnie Lott. They must have had the Super Bowl on their minds when he broke the play like that, because I'm surprised they didn't just go straight ahead. He's almost impossible to stop when they run straight ahead and they look like they tried to pop him outside to get a little more than one yard this is the play he ran against miami in the super bowl that he broke for a long touchdown and 
And once again, he carried the ball way out there. That was a little surprising. Ronnie Lott was not at the Super Bowl <laughs> in that Ronnie. particular year. And he's fourth down to four. That means Joe Washington replaces Riggins. We get the third wide receiver, Alvin Garrett, joins Art Monk and Virgil C. And put it all on the line. The blitz is on. Monk has the first down. And, and he'll more. get more. Inside the 15-yard line, Dwight Hicks riding Monk to the surface. Got to be one of his better nights, if not his best night in his career, because Art Monk's been all over the place out there. 167 yards. In numbers of catches, in yardage, career highs for Art Monk. See, I was just I have an intuitive feel about it. things like that. 6.02, and the clock continues to move. Continues to move. Some people do, you know. in motion. Heisman in trouble. And scrambles out of trouble, but he'll lose a couple of yards. Chased out of bounds by Milt McCall. Heisman trying to get into the end zone. He was looking for Virgil C. He was well covered. And well, second down and about 11. He accomplished one thing, as you can see Pee Wee, Dwayne Board, 76, has to chase him so far, he's exhausted, and he just walked off the field. <laughs> so their best lineman is now standing on the sideline, the 49ers. That was good hustle by McCall, though, wasn't it? Joe Theismann at halftime was 9 of 16, 78 yards. He's 22 of 38 now, 286 yards and a touchdown. They have marked it at the 16, so it's in effect. Second down and 12. Dyson drills it into the turf, intended for Alvin Garrett. Mario Clark was there defensively in good position for the 49ers. It'll be third down and 12. Clock stops with 5.35. I mentioned the next Sunday, Washington will be back home at RFK Stadium where they know nothing but sellouts. They'll play the Giants, the team that had them up against the wall in the final game of the regular season last year, unable to put points on the board, but they intercepted Theismann four times in that game. That's the New York Giants. And the 49ers <laughs> will stay home. They'll entertain the New Orleans Saints. The Giants that are leading the NFC East. Garrett in motion. Theismann is back. Good oh. old shot, but C did not handle it. I think it was deflected. Yeah, I think Ronnie it? got it. Ronnie got a hand on it, I think, Frank. If he did, he got a pinky on it. He just got a pinky, but it <laughs> might have been enough. Let's uh, see. Let's see. That's Lot pursuing. Yeah. Oh, he yes. Did. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie Lott really is not known as a pass defender. He's a good one, but he plays cornerback like, well, what'd you say in the Pro Bowl? He plays cornerback like he's playing offense. Uh -huh. Plus, he led this team. How many teams are led in tackles? by a cornerback. Ronnie Lott makes a great play for the 49ers. 5.30 remaining in the game, and the Redskins use one of their three timeouts. That's the story from Candlestick Park. The Redskins have battled back, but they are now faced with a fourth down and 12. Charlie Brown has been missing from the past few offensive sets of the Washington Redskins, and he came into the game, O.J. and I were both looking at him, and he was kept grabbing the back of his left leg, so he might have a slight pull. But he's in there on fourth and 12 in the play that could make the difference in this football game. 37-24, the 49ers over the Redskins, 5.30 remaining, and the Redskins down to two timeouts. And a must touchdown here, or at least first down. Charlie Brown is even limping up at the top of your screen. He will, I'm possibly not going to be the prime receiver. Diving attempt for it. The flag is down. They're going to call it on Garrett, looks like. Well, Interference. Don't point that way. <laughs> and it, I think it's offense. Yeah. Garrett was tied up at Dwight Hicks. Oh. That'll be declined, and the 49ers will get the ball back. Now, this is Alvin Garrett working against Dwight Hicks. 
Derek could have been open a moment ago. Oh. Just pushed him into the inside. Yeah, I guess that was. But he slipped down a moment ago when he was open, and Joe had thrown to the outside, and Garrett couldn't get to it. It didn't appear as if he had to push him because it looked as if Dwight Hicks was running inside. At least he had it back to him. 49ers now will think ball control. They might have started thinking it a little earlier, or maybe too early. They have 524 on the clock, and they have a 13-point lead. From their own 16-yard line. I bet they give the ball to Roger Craig. <laughs> Craig and he bounces off Redskins. First one was Dexter Manley. Well, the 49ers have done a good job over the last two years improving their running game. They were last in the NFL two years ago, and last year they improved it up to uh, eighth in all of football. So they have the ability to run the ball and control it here. I think you saw Manley grab his leg. He started limping to the sidelines, and he just collapsed on the way over there. I think it's Daryl Grant, isn't it, uh, Frank? Is it Daryl Grant? Yes, Daryl Grant. It is Daryl Grant, and that, of course, really hurts the Redskins. He's played a whale of a game tonight. They bring in Perry Brooks. Yes, Daryl Grant goes to the sidelines. Grabs his right leg. Probably has a cramp. Second down and eight. That's the time remaining in the game. Craig. Craig stops the clock. He was looking for first down yardage. He comes up short by about three. Yeah. He stops the clock at 4.39. Well, it's too early to worry about not running out of bounds. They need a couple of first downs here, but once again, that illustrates what I was saying about Craig earlier. He is really deceptive. He has the overtime. I mean, that overtime, uh, overdrive rather speed when he needs it. That was Daryl Grant. They were obviously massaging his calf and I think O.J. was right. He probably picked up a cramp. Third down and three. Here comes the blitz for the Redskins. The 49ers will sack Montana at their second of the game, second of the season. There's now, Mel Kaufman there. I bet he says something to Freddie Solomon because he was looking for Freddie to hook up. Freddie was either covered or thought he can get more yardage out of it. Let's see. See, he goes right to Freddie Solomon now, and the two of them were talking to one another. You know, you keep, go back to a moment ago when Roger Craig went out of bounds trying to get first down yardage. He stopped the clock and perhaps preserved about a full minute for the Redskins. As we look at Mike Nelms, he's right at midfield waiting for the kick of Tom Orris. And they'll take, take it right down to for one second or two seconds on that clock before Oris will indicate that he wants a snap. We'll take it down to four seconds. Mike Nelms. Good coverage with the 49ers. And the Redskins will have the ball back near the 44-yard line. They need a quick one. Well, Nelms wasn't too impressed by Oris's ability to punt because he, the way he lined up, he was expecting a 30-yard punt, and it was about a 30-yard punt. He has scouted him well. Actually, a 31-yard punt. 3.59 remaining in the game. Got to score quick. Virgil C. Alvin Garrett, Art Monk, wide receivers. Charlie Brown was limping the last time we watched him. He was grabbing the back of his leg. He could have enough to pull. Feisman looking Ooh. for all of it. That's Art Monk. He got a lot of it. And he gets it to the 12-yard line, right in stride. Theismann hits Art Monk. And the Redskins are not out of this yet. That was a pretty throw. Uh, Maybe can't throw him much better. Yeah, that was just nice. <laughs> Art's very close to the sideline. Maybe Looking on Ronnie Lott. Yeah. So Ronnie well, Lott, who made a great play in the end zone. That time, watch Monk get behind him. And again, Ronnie Lott playing with a very sore ankle. When is the last time a receiver has caught passes for over 200 yards? Must have been a while. Not even Duper. First down and 10. Whoa. Heisman fires a shot. Did he take it in? Yes. Touchdown. Virgil C. holds on inbound. Touchdown. And this game is all of a sudden taking on a dramatic turn. Dark Monk, one of the 
great offensive weapons for the Redskins. And now it's Virgil C. I don't know if it was Dwight Hicks, but someone who was guarding uh, Virgil C fell down. And as you can see, C is all by himself. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I see C's by himself. I showed you Art Monk's <laughs> yardage a moment ago. The record for Redskin is held by Bobby Mitchell. Personnel man now with the Washington Redskins. He had 218 yards. We'll watch Mark Mosley drill it through the uprights. And now six points separate the two teams. They were separated by 24 at halftime with the 49ers on top, 27 to 3. Okay, Here's he C goes again. inside, he comes outside, and he fall. I, I can't see the number, but his defender fell. Keita Turner doesn't even know he's, he's there. He's not aware that he's behind him, otherwise he would have turned around and ran with him. And C makes a very nice grab out of it. Well-thrown ball by Joe Theismann, who had rolled a little bit to the right, found C perfectly. And the 49ers have gathered on the sidelines with their special team. They know the problem that they are confronted with. They need to run off the three, hundred, three minutes and 44 seconds that remain. All right, now they, they wouldn't try an onside kick, would they, at 344? Uh -huh. You got to go ahead and kick it on down there and hold them again. They've been doing a good job this last half. They have two timeouts. You got to kick it away. And, yeah. And then they have the kind of a defense that majors in takeaways. They led the NFL in the takeaway giveaway ratio by plus 43 last year. Niners seem to think they're going to try an onside kick because they got all their players up front. They got them up there, but I don't think they'll get it. I wouldn't either. Plenty of time. McLemore is back. He has a long way to go to get to the wedge. Oh, yeah. All of those men for the 49ers up around the 40-yard line. McLemore was doing that on his own. He gets back only to about the 14-yard line. 49ers now. They have to run some time off that clock. Well, you give it to Craig. And give credit to these Redskins. They were down 27-3. Out of it offensively and defensively in the first half, and they have battled back. I truly think knowing Bill Walsh and being around him uh, often in the last few years, I don't think he's going to play the clock. He's going to play the score now, and if he gives it up and Washington scores, I think he feels he may have enough time to get the ball back again. So I think they're thinking about scoring points at this point. Two series, and I mentioned they may have started preserving time a little early. They have put it on the Whoa. ground. Whoa. Tyler, that time you saw Tyler covering the ball up with both hands. <laughs> and by doing that, he did <laughs> run a pretty good he? shot. <laughs> he says, hold it. That is not his style of running. No. It's hard to protect yourself when you're protecting that ball. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if I, I think he would probably in the long run decide to protect himself before he protects <laughs> yeah. that ball. Yeah. Second down and eight. The Redskins, they're good at it. The first man there will make sure of the tackle, and the next one or two Redskins will follow reaching and grabbing and hitting for the ball. That's Tyler in motion. And here's Craig. And Craig out over the 20-yard line, short of the first down by about three, hit by Charlie Mann and Dexter Manley. Clock continues to run. And now we have the timeout indicated. The Redskins stop it with 2.42 remaining. They have one timeout and, of course, the two-minute warning to work with. Well, they only got one timeout. I'm going to try this one again, Don. It's 30. It's 68 points here. That's really a good. A lot of Jay. points for two teams who played in the championship that game. right. I remember last time I tried that in Green Bay. <laughs> I know. The boys gotta... haven't let me forget it. Well, this man would love another <laughs> shot at it. Joe Theismann. Sunday for Washington. I mentioned it's the Giants for the 49ers. It's New Orleans. We'll see the Redskins twice more. November the 5th at RFK Stadium in Washington against Atlanta. And we'll watch them against Minnesota November the 29th. We'll see the 49ers also twice. In four weeks, we'll see them against the Giants at the Meadowlands. And then on December the 14th against the Los Angeles Rams. I tell you, if the 49ers don't get the first down, they'll wish they had that Roby kid from Miami, a Ray guy from the Raiders or someone here that can punt the ball because Oris has not been doing a pretty uh, good job of kicking the ball tonight. The reason they have Oris because he kicked for Miami until Reggie Roby showed up. Third down and three. There he is right 
there. Wide open. Dwight Clark, first down. And out of the 30-yard line to the 33-yard line. A good night for Dwight Clark coming back from ligament surgery following the 83 season. Good shot there. Uh, coming back. All right, he's got a little pressure, but Dwight comes in with a little delayed pattern. Good target. Big target. Five yards. They do have a lot of different kinds of pass patterns. You'll see them run plays that you don't see a lot of other teams run. I tell you, historically, every time they need a big third down play, they go to Dwight Clark. And I think I'd have had a guy playing Dw uh, Dwight Mann, even though they had a zone. I think I'd have paid particular attention to Dwight Clark on that. Redskins use their final timeout. They have nothing but the two-minute warning with which to work now. And 2.31 remains on the clock. And uh, there's no surprise that Wendell Tyler is coming out of the game. Crowd still here. They have gone up and down like a yo-yo tonight. Oh, 518 yards against a two-time Super Bowl team. Well, when you consider they gave up, Washington did 397 yards last week against Miami. They better go back to the drawing board. Frank. He handles the ball very securely. And he could be the man they'll use to run out the clock. Okay. Right, yeah, pay, pay attention. All right, I'm on you. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. I'm ready. No. I can do it next. Not next year. No. We but head to the two-minute warning, and that's the last time that the Redskins will get the benefit of the stop. Why, my computer? No, that no team has ever gone to the Super Bowl having dropped their first two games. But the Redskins are the kind of a team that goes on streaks. They've had so many winning streaks well, since Joe Gibbs arrived there. Frank, I can't uh, help but believe that the team that we saw in the second half will be the Redskins team we'll see the rest of the season. First half tonight will get their attention. <laughs> Roger Craig. Uh, Craig doesn't like this because Anytime they run the same play three times in a row, you say, hey, coach, come on, give me a break. They're, they're running a little counter play, the play that Pittsburgh has run uh, so many times with Franco Harris. The guy lined up behind the quarterback, takes a step, and runs to the left side. Hey, what you do have to think about if you're in a Redskins uniform or in the administration is that they have given up almost 1,000 yards in two football games. And we get to see one of those teams they gave it up to next week, the Miami Dolphins, super duper. San Marino, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. You should From have. tonight, that'll be up in Buffalo. Next Sunday night, we have Cleveland and Denver. The second down and 11. Montana. Blocks. Oh, Texter. Clock keeps moving. And they can run it out. And the 49ers will get some measure of revenge for a loss in the NFC Championship game. A game they felt they should have won. They felt that two penalties late in the game cost them the opportunity. They lost the 24-21, and Mosley split the upright with 40 seconds remaining. But this man, Joe Montana, in that game, in the fourth quarter, threw three touchdowns to tie it up at 21. This will be the final play. And Rich Malott, for whatever reason, reaches across and shoves the 49er. That'll be an offside penalty. I think he did it to prove you wrong, Frank. It's not the final play. Yeah. I think well, it is. They that's haven't it. run it yet. Yeah, that's it. He says, he, this is a foul in the last 30 seconds by the defense. They've had their three timeouts. The offense can choose to end the game. The game All is right. over. Yeah, he was <laughs> right. right. I, I knew that Dick Jorgensen was vindicated. That's right. And it's unlike the Gettysburg Address, but he got it out. Four score. Bill Walsh. The 49ers are now 2-0. Last week, a 30-27 win over Detroit. And tonight, they defeat the Washington Redskins 37-31. We'll be back with a final word in just a moment. That's today's Chevrolet. Once again, the final score, the 49ers defeat the Redskins 37-31. Remember to stay tuned for ABC News Nightline immediately following your late local news. Those of you in the West Coast, stay tuned for a Barbara Walters special. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Chevrolet. 
with the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality, and the value that make up today's Chevrolet. And by light beer from Miller, everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Our blimp provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by United Airlines. You're not just flying in, you're flying the friendly sky. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. And OJ and I will see you next weekend from Cleveland with Denver, and Don will be there Monday. Back home, they could always count on the weather, but here on the islands... This is a golden opportunity. Temperatures are always rising. Right? Say right. Detectives Andy Senkowski and Mac Riley with you this Friday at 9, 8 central for the special two-hour premiere of Hawaiian Heat.